let the party begin here on the GCU campus as the student body comes together on this homecoming night. Lots of festivities in store for current students as well as alumni as they welcome them back to the friendly uh, environment here on the Grand Canyon University. And how do you top a picture perfect day in the desert? Well, it's a night to remember here inside GCU Arena with the love celebrated homecoming and also returning to WAC action to take on their conference bow in Cal State Bakersfield. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show coming at you on your view. Now you'll remember Wednesday night the Lopes went out there with a dominating non-conference win and now they return to WAC action really trying to pick up the momentum to carry them into the tournament looking for that fourth straight win going up against Bakersfield who you'll remember came out strong firing on all cylinders when they started WAC play with a 6-1 and one record however they have now dropped five of their last six games and so the Lopes try to capitalize on that of course they're trying to play their best basketball down the stretch but even more on the line tonight as it is senior night and so the Lopes will take the court celebrating four very special players suited in the Lopes uniform I think uh, you know every game is really important and, you know this one's ultimately uh, important when it comes to like the uh, the WAC rankings and um, you know, you're, we're really up for this game, and you know it's it's going to be a good, uh, a surreal experience for the seniors. But at the same time, you know we, we know what our goals are, and um, we're trying to you know stay uh, level-headed here going into the last stretch of the league. Yeah, I think it's just important. It doesn't matter senior night or not. I think we just need to be playing well, uh, continue to improve, so we can start playing our best basketball in the next couple of games. So we're ready for uh, Vegas in a few weeks. So. This is an important game. Uh, they're a team that's, I think, one or two games behind us, so it's really important we need to get this win. And although he is sidelined with that knee injury, great to hear from Jared Martin, no doubt. His teammates will be celebrating him tonight. But we'll also be talking a lot about the guys who will be on the court. And the folks doing that talking, well, it's the rest of our broadcasting teams. Let's bring them in now. Barry Patel, Scott Williams. And guys, tonight's a bittersweet night, not only for the seniors, but for us too. Our last regular season broadcast here. So you better bring your A game. Another year is in the books. It's hard to believe, but it's really getting down to crunch time now in the Western Athletic Conference. New Mexico State on top. They're the top seed. But boy, two, three, four, all up for grabs. Yeah, Utah Valley's really playing some good basketball right now. Lopes in a tie for second place with them. And it really big, makes a big difference because if you're second, you get to play against Seattle. And I don't think nearly as dangerous as UMKC if you finish third. New Mexico State winners today against Chicago State now have won 15 in a row, are 14 and one. Definitely the team to beat. They are the defending WAC champions. Well, they'll need a full contingent of all the players and one senior to talk about that has been lighting it up as of late is Michael Finke. Well, Michael Finke has been absolutely fantastic in that last basketball game. He was wonderful. He just had it really going, knocked down the outside shot, but then he got real aggressive after that. I mean, he was moving without the basketball, being very aggressive, going to the basket. Uh, he had a little of uh, his creativity with a little dipsy do move. And then when it came back to his bread and butter, he was outstanding behind that arc, knocking down six three-point shots. 34 minutes, 38 points, passing the 1,000 points for his career. Michael Finke from Champaign, Illinois, playing really well as of late, uh, having that career night. Also another guy that's been lighting it up, and it's so great to see, Carlos Johnson. Los has been loose. <laughs> he's playing really good basketball, three in that starting lineup now. He's been absolutely fantastic. He's averaged about 17 points a game as a starter. He's moving the inside game, the power, the elevation, the detonation. He's got it all working. 35 minutes, 25 points, four boards, five assists, double-digit scoring in 12 of the last 14 games for Carlos Johnson. The uh, Lopes closing out their home regular season slate against their Roadrunners from CSU Bakersfield. Well, yeah, really well coached. Coach Barnes, great coach. They started 6-1. and one. They were red hot, and then they lost five of the last six. Yeah, they, figure. I had a chance to talk to Coach Barnes before the game. He said he's got a couple of guys playing banged up, but one guy has been absolutely fantastic. It's their sophomore sensation. J.J. Darkell Jordan, he has been wonderful for them. As a freshman, he averaged 10 points a game. He's averaging 16 points a game as a season uh, on the season, but in whack play, Barry, he is leading the whack in scoring in over 19 points a ball game. Says Coach Barr says he's got an old school game. He mentions the curls, the 15-foot pull-ups. Not a great three-point shooter, but he'll make you pay getting into that painted area. 
Well, the Lopes took care of the Roadrunners at Bakersfield earlier this month. They'll see if they can make it two in a row. We'll send it back upstairs to UK. Well, guys, we know this is a very special night, homecoming here at GCU and also senior night. And what would be great on senior night? Well, to go out there and score, say, 26 points. That's what Scott Williams did back on his senior night with the Tar Heels. But Scott, I know it was just like yesterday. So what is that feeling for seniors when you take the court, your final regular home season game in front of your home crowd, especially here, when we know what it is to play, what it's like to play in front of the Havocs. What do you think is going through their mind right now? Uh, they're, they're in a euphoric state right now. They're so excited to be taking the floor for the last time. They got the distraction somewhat of the parents being here, uh, brothers and sisters, friends and family, relatives, aunts, uncles, cousins. All kinds of things going on. You got to hug your coach before game, getting pictures, giving out roses to your mom. You got to put all that aside. Remember what you want to do. Most importantly, is put on a show for these fans one last time. Walk off this floor with a win. And if they need any help, I brought my Air Jordans just in, just in case they need me to suit up. I got my Bulls jersey on underneath this. You're ready. That's for sure. All right. We'll see if they can get that performance you got with the Tar Heels on your senior night. And you're going to hear it a lot tonight, I'm guessing. A bittersweet night. Very exciting night for those four seniors and for the Lopes as they've had so far a very successful season. But a lot of work to be had. And so we'll see how Dan Marley's feeling on this night. He's intense when he's on the court. But he's a little sentimental, too. We'll see what is going through the coach's mind right after this as our Barry Patel sits down with him here on the Lopes pregame show. GCULopes.com. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Western Athletic Conference basketball tournament tickets on sale right now. Come support both the men's and women's teams as they try for their first NCAA tournament bids. The tournament set for March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets now. Hope to see you there. The Lopes Pregame Show continues from GCU Arena the Lopes tip off against the CSU Bakersfield Roadrunners. Barry Butel alongside the head coach Dan Marley. You guys are on a bit of a roll the last three games, 90 plus points offensively. Yeah, one by 30 the last three. Uh, you know, played well, really well in the second half uh, last game and kind of saw a show first from Carlos Johnson and then Michael <laughs> Finke caught fire there in the second half. That was a lot of fun to watch. That was a big win, 120 of your tenure here. That's about an average of 20 victories if you do the math, which I wasn't very good at, but that's you've got to feel pretty good about yeah that. I try not to do math uh, <laughs> yeah we you know 20 20 win marks always a, a, a good a goal to get uh, hopefully we can get that this year uh, we've had a hard schedule and we've dropped some gains but uh, we have a chance to get 20 here in regular season we got to close it out with three wins though always emotional on uh, senior night and there's some special guys that are playing their last regular season yeah it'll be really emotional night mainly because of you know obviously with Trey and Michael being here just for one year but with Matt and Jared uh, two guys have been here for five years uh, uh, came here with very little chance to probably go to the tournament didn't know uh, you know if they were gonna redshirt or whatever Matt with an injury then Jared uh, blew out his knee after we signed him so uh, just a lot of loyalty from those guys great culture guys uh, terrific guys on the floor off the floor um, care about winning, unbelievable teammates, and both of them got, have become very good basketball players. So uh, when those two guys go, it'll be a, it'll be a sad day. Jared was just a uh, defensive jam. I remember the uh, steal he had uh, late in the game against San Diego State. He jumps up on the, uh, the media table. Definitely a big, big 
key on defense. Yeah, you know, came in as a freshman, started on that 27-win team, uh, has played a, a, a bench role, and then this year uh, came in late and, and started and was really playing his best basketball of his career. Shoot the ball, terrific, 60% from three. We all know what he does defensively, steals, taking charges, uh, just his hustle, his heart, uh, just his emotional leadership, how smart he is. Uh, so you can't quantify what he brings to this team was on the floor. So, you know, one of the most unfair things I think I've ever been involved in, uh, in a, as a basketball player or as a coach to see him go down into practice in a non-contact uh, way and to, to blow out his ACL right when he is playing his best basketball. Another guy from Australia that makes me really want to travel to Australia because these guys are really well represent this, that, uh, that country is Matt Jackson. Here's a guy that came back from so many injuries. He really had, you know, uh, actually took a walk-on role for a little bit, battling some hip injuries, some back, and he's had them all. And this is another guy that just has continued to fight and has been a terrific role player for us. All he comes in, another smart guy. Uh, can really pass, shoots the ball, great defensively. We can switch him on every player. So, uh, as I said, both those guys, the, the, the greatest thing to me is just their whole team concept. All they care about is their teammates and winning basketball games. A guy that you took a bit of a chance on, D2 transfer, is Trey Drexel. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think Trey's done a great job. You know, this is a guy who wanted to, to prove that he was a Division One player, wanted to be a point guard. Uh, you know, I smartened up a little bit because he's a better two guard. Played him and Damari a lot there uh, once he got it going. And... Uh, Gave him a challenge of being our best rebounder, and he's done that. Uh, very physical, uh, has had trouble shooting the ball a little bit, but that's never stopped him from playing hard and helping our team win. So uh, I think he's done exactly what he wanted to do. He's proven that he's a Division One basketball player. He's been a big part of our success. This year. Definitely. So how about the last one, Michael Finke? He certainly lit it up the last game, and he really seems to be hitting his stride right when you want guys to hit the stride here late in the year. Yeah, he's really figured it out. And as I said, sometimes it takes these fifth-year guys to to regain their confidence and figure out how they're supposed to score in our offense. And right now, he's been able to do it uh, from all over the floor. His post-up game has really improved. Uh, he rebounds the ball. He can really stretch it and shoot it. And he's put on a show here uh, uh, these last couple weeks with 36-point effort at UMKC and then the 38-point effort he had uh, uh, last game. So very happy for Michael because another guy that uh, just works really, really hard and cares about winning. Coach Barnes, a uh, really good coach, brings in a Roadrunners team that started the season 6-1, and one, but they've lost five of their last six. Really hard to figure this team out. Jarkel Joyner, guy to look out for. Yeah, you know, we went into Bakersfield, and we were both 6-1, and one, kind of battling for that first-place team with New Mexico State, and we came away with a great win there, and uh, they've struggled since then. But uh, as you said, he's a great coach. they got a bunch of guys who play extremely hard uh, defensively. They put a lot of pressure on you, force turnovers. Uh, the big thing is is how well they offensive read on the basketball. They're third in the nation in offensive rebounds. They average almost 16 offensive rebounds a game in the WAC. Uh, so we're going to have to do a good job of not only playing defense, but securing the boards and not let them get two or three efforts. And then Joyner is probably one of the, not probably, is one of the best players in the league. Uh, mm -hmm. Just an electric guard that can, uh, score off the dribble, can come off picks, can take it to the basket, so we'll have to do a good job on him. Well, good luck tonight in the regular season finale. All right, thank you. All right, head coach Dan Marley, our guest. Stay with us more. The Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena. But first, it's a parent's nightmare to find out their child has been diagnosed with cancer. But GCU and the Children's Cancer Network is doing something about it. You'll meet this year's Race to Fight Children's Cancer Race starter, Gwen Satterley, when we return. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Tweet a raffle. Tweet a raffle. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. Welcome. 
Welcome back, a live look inside GCU Arena as the Lopes join forces to celebrate homecoming as well as senior night tonight. Members of the dance and cheer team and Havoc being introduced on the court right now. They're having fun in here and we want you to be a fun part of the fun even if you're at home tonight. So put on that purple and find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, use that hashtag Lopes up. Right now you can see tweets are scrolling on the bottom of our screen and your tweets might be one of them. And this is the Havoc Cam. Check it out. We are inside here bringing you the experience tonight. I think I'm going to put on some pads or something to go in there, like football pads. I think I need to be uh, in the Havoc crowd because it can be a little scary there. But Kate Longworth here with Lopes Green Game Show. I'm going to do my best to bring you the atmosphere here. But first, I want to turn to a little bit more serious uh, topic. On March 16th, the ninth annual Run to Fight Children's Cancer will take place. This event not only raises awareness, but also much needed funds for research and treatment of this horrific disease. It also, it also provides resources and support for families battling pediatric cancer. We wanna take this time now to introduce you to this year's race starter. She's an absolute warrior, seven-year-old Gwen Satterley. The 2019 Run to Fight Honorary Race Starter is seven-year-old Gwen Satterley who was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in June of 2016. We didn't know that there was anything seriously wrong with her, but it was the middle of the summer and she got a fever. It seemed like things were a little bit off. It, we figured maybe it was heat exhaustion, but come one morning she woke up and she had a rash on her neck. And even though she's feared skinned, some kind of parental concern went off that something is really wrong at this point. So we took her into the pediatrician and she ended up getting some blood work done. And by the end of that day, the pediatrician had called us back and said that we needed to come to the office even after hours because they thought that she had leukemia. Throughout Gwen's treatment at Phoenix Children's Hospital, the Satterleys found solace in the unwavering support from their loved ones and children's cancer network. Phoenix Children's Hospital and CCN, the Children's Cancer Network, have both been great resources from a, you know, obviously from a medical standpoint, but also, and maybe more importantly, from a social and emotional standpoint. The Children's Cancer Network has been invaluable for us as far as helping uh, her sibling, Paige, because they have had programs where siblings could be involved, meet other siblings, they got attention put on them, and they got to do fun things. But helping siblings has been a big struggle for us, and, and a place where I really hope that future attention and focus is placed, because that, I think, is just as integral to the overall health of the family. Having a child diagnosed with cancer is like being invited to an exclusive club that you never wanted to be a part of, but it really is a great group of people and a wonderful support system once you are there. As the ninth annual race approaches, Run to Fight plans to build upon the nearly three quarters of a million dollars in funds raised. Gwyn's gladiators look forward to stepping up in the fight against pediatric cancer as Gwyn will carry the torch and blow the horn to kick off the race. Having our family participate and be race starters for the Run to Fight Cancer has been something that we've really looked forward to. There's a bunch of families and kids that are great warriors and uh, have shown us what it's like to fight this fight um, and do it with grace and with bravery. And so to be a part of that family is amazing. And we just hope that we can help inspire other families and other kids who are going through the same thing. Stepping up the fight against cancer is, you know, I think it's the cornerstone of our life right now. It's a cause that is near and dear to our heart. Anything we can do to generate awareness and generate more money for better research and better treatments we're all in. I've been so blown away and so impressed by the way that Gwen has handled this. I would say that if of all the people in our family, her personality is the one that's been most capable of handling this. She's been strong, she hasn't complained. It's like she accepts that there are things that she needs to do in order to help herself and she just powers through them and she does it with a smile. For me, just being around Gwen, it's just special. She is a happy kid. She's got a wonderful personality. Given what we've gone through, you know, watching Gwen with a, a smile as she usually does from ear to ear, well, you know, from the start to the finish of her weekly gymnastics class is, is a great thing. 
to see. She just couldn't have more fun. And we want you to step up to the fight on March 16th for the run to fight children's cancer. Walk, run, cheer on these young warriors. The run to fight cancer. Dot com. Again, that's the run to fight cancer dot com. All right, plenty more still to come here on the Lopes pregame show on your view. It's been a banner year for GCU sports and it's homecoming and senior night tonight. So who better to give us perspective than what's going on here on campus than GCU President Brian Mueller. Mr. Mueller checks in with us right after the break. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back here at the Lopes pregame show, a live look inside GCU Arena, where the atmosphere is always exciting here, but it's up a notch even, as this is the regular, last regular home season game here. And I'm Kate Longworth, welcoming you back to the show, and I'm joined now by President Brian Mueller. Thanks so much for being here, and it's been a great week on campus, so I just wanted to get a look at what the atmosphere has been like with this homecoming and senior night. Well, it's fantastic. You know, Grand Canyon uh, has been here since 1951 in the Valley, and we've had a lot of great alumni, and, uh, and the alumni have such great feelings about their experience here. So they've been back on campus. They're getting to meet our students. Our students are really excited because of the basketball season, but they're also be excited because of all the other things that are going on on the campus. And so it's great to see our alumni interact with our students and come together as a single community. Yeah, they were having fun at the tailgate before this, the party out on at the quad, right? When you walk into GCU Arena, what exactly events have been taking place for students inspiring students, for the homecoming festivities, as well as the Hall of Fame induction? It's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. We had a Hall of Fame induction. We, we uh, 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 elected five new members to the Hall of Fame, uh, one in our athletic area, which is a softball player, and then four academically. They've done incredible things in their career, so it was great to honor them. The Students Inspiring Schools and Scholarship Program is really blowing up. Uh, we now have 250 students on full tuition scholarships. They attend our learning lounge. We've got 1,200 students providing one-on-one -on -one tutoring every day between 3 o'clock and 8 o'clock uh, to uh, over 100 schools. And we're raising money because eventually we want 800 kids from these local inner city schools on full tuition scholarships here. We had two students present. They were unbelievably inspiring. And so if anybody out there wants to know more about that or is interested in supporting that, I don't know of a single thing that's having a greater impact in a place like Maryvale than that program. Yeah, we've had a chance to talk to a lot of people involved with students, inspiring students. And you see both in the GCU students and in those younger students how that is impacting their lives, changing their lives from their studies and personal lives. And then it's fun for them to come out here to a basketball game because this team has given the fans and the community a lot to cheer about. Right now, second in the WAC, getting ready for the tournament. It has a chance at a first NCAA bid. What do you think has been fueling Dan Marley's team this year? Well, you know, every basketball season has uh, has highs and lows. No matter how good or, or not good you are, there's highs and lows. We went through a little bit of a low period a couple weeks ago, which I think turned out to be a good thing because we're on an uptick again. Uh, we're second in the conference. We got a three-game winning streak. We win tonight, then we go down the road for two. Michael Finke and Carlos Johnson are just exploding on the scene. 
Uh, Michael Finke had 38 points the last game. He did something that only one player in the history of the NCAA has done with his points, rebounds, and assists, and shooting percentage in that game. And so you got to love these kids, and you got to love this team uh, because of who they are and their character, their desire. Uh, and uh, if you haven't, uh, get behind them. Consider going to Las Vegas because they are on an uptick. And if we can get some breaks in Las Vegas and win three in a row, we'll be in. And that's the goal. Yeah, Lopes on the road, and they're playing the type of basketball Dan Marley likes to see. And also, as uh, we turn the page, we'll ride out the basketball season in March. It's time for baseball season. Coming off a great win at USC. What do you think Andy Sankowitz has in store for fans this year? Well, if you haven't come out to one of our baseball games, highly encourage it. Our new stadium was voted the single best uh, new stadium in the country last year. Uh, so you'll love our stadium, you'll love the weather. Andy Stankwitz is building what I believe will be a top 20 program. Uh, we started out by beating, uh, uh, who did we play the first game? Wichita, Wichita State. And then we beat a big win last night. Beat USC at USC. And so they really hit the ball well. They've got a starting pitcher that is one of the best in the country. Uh, and so what he's building there, if you like baseball, Get in on the ground floor of it because he's going to build a top 20 program. Yeah, Braz will build at GCU Ballpark. It's something for all the students to take in, plus the community. We hope to see you guys out there. President Mueller, thanks for checking in with us. A big night on hand, and uh, we're going to keep talking about the exciting things happening here inside GCU Arena. Guys, we're still moments from tip-off, but you wouldn't know with this crowd. We'll be right back right after this. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. On the women's side, Nicole Powell's squad suffers an unfortunate loss, 51-37, a final at Bakersfield. Chicago State drops the loss at New Mexico State. Cal Baptist victorious over Utah Valley, 92-74, the final there. Meanwhile, happening here inside GC Arena, it's a party. They're ready for action tonight, but what's it look like across the NCAA college landscape when it comes to basketball? Well. Gonzaga is in that top ranked spot with that 27 and 2 record. Virginia, they beat Pitt today, 73 49. Meanwhile, Duke, first game without Zion, and they handled it well. Took care of Miami with a 30 point victory in that number four spot, Kentucky. But will they fall? Because they did fall today to number seven, Tennessee, 71 52, a final there. North Carolina, Scott Williams. Tar Heels in action with Clemson right now. Michigan State is upset at Indiana. So this top 10 might look a little different, especially because number eight, Houston, suffering second loss of the season, an upset to UCF. Taking a look now at numbers 11 through 20, Texas Tech leading things off, followed by Nevada, LSU, Purdue, and Kansas. Rounding out the 20, you'll see Wisconsin in that 19 spot, 20, Virginia Tech. And as for the top 25, number 21, Buffalo, and you'll see the one and only Pac-12 squad making the cut. That's Washington there in action tomorrow at Stanford. All right, the stage is set. It is senior night here at GCU Arena, a very special night for four seniors suited up in the Lopes uniform, but also a special night for many on campus. And we know for you fans at home, there's a lot at stake. So you will wait no more. Grab that snack, and we will be right back with men's Division One college basketball here on your view. The Lopes in action right after this.
We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. And inside GCU Arena, where tonight we welcome in homecoming and senior night and Bakersfield taking on the Lopes. Welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, it's a regular season home finale, Scott, and the Western Athletic Conference standings are ever so tight, two through four. Yeah, they're absolutely real tight. Jammed up is back. GCU and Utah Valley tied in that second seat, and they want to finish second. They do not want to see UMKC if you finish third. They're the more dangerous of the two teams. You'd much rather pick that second spot, take on Seattle, and get that early victory in the first round. They'll be relying on one senior to step up, and has he ever a career night the other night against Eastern New Mexico, Michael Finke. He was absolutely sensational, stroking it from the outside. He had the pick and pop on repeat, knocking down six threes in the basketball game, grabbed eight boards, and just had a handful of assists as well. Michael Finke, a huge night surpassing 1,000 points for his career. 38 points in 34 minutes. Oh yeah, eight rebounds and also six assists for the senior from Champaign, Illinois. Bakersfield comes in, they started the season six and one, Scott. Five of their last six have not gone well. Now banged up a little bit. I mean, they just not getting a lot of consistent basketball play. They were doing a really good job early in the season, crashing the glass, especially the offensive board. They're ranked third in the country in offensive rebounding, but they got out-rebounded in their last game. They've been out-rebounded a few games this year. It's really made it tough for them to be consistent. Well, they're going to be led by their sophomore guard from Oxford, Mississippi, Jarkel Joyner. Yeah, this has got an old school game to him. He's a slasher. He's a pick-and-pop guy. He curls. This is a mid-range pull-up jumper. Not a three-point shooter, but boy, has he really blossomed in his sophomore season. Up from 10 points his freshman year, 16 points on a season, and in the conference, he's leading all scores over 19 a game. So the Lopes will be looking to take on Bakersfield, a team that Coach Barnes has really primed and ready to go. So we'll see how they respond here before a packed house at GCU Arena. Carlos Johnson has definitely played well as of late, too. We cannot be remiss and not talk about him. He's been aggressive. Yeah, well, he's using his size and his strength to his advantage. Not many whack defenders can stay with him. Well, we're sending it down to the public address room. Paul Denuser, before our prayer and our national anthem, of course, this is senior night, homecoming night, an emotional night. The likes of the Aussies, Matt Jackson, and also Jared Martin, Trey Drexel, and Michael Finke, all honored tonight on senior night. Once again to the beautiful GCU Arena, home of the biggest party in all of college basketball. For senior night and tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Roadrunners of Cal State University Bakersfield and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Fans, tonight we would like to recognize our seniors with the men's basketball program. First up, we have managers Gus Colburn and Charlie Watkins. <laughs> Gus and Charlie assist the coaching staff and help organize practices and player workouts. 
Thank you, Gus and Charlie, for all your hard work behind the scenes these past two years. Once again, managers Gus Colburn and Charlie Watkins. And now for the players. First of all, number two, Trey Drexel. <laughs> Trey Drexel joined the Lopes as a graduate transfer last summer after three stellar seasons at Western Washington. Drexel jumped right in with a team best 17 point performance at South Dakota State. The 6'6 guard has averaged 8.1 points, 2.7 assists, and a team leading 5.4 rebounds per game, including a standout 15 point, 14 rebound performance against Seattle University. Joining Trey this evening are his parents, Tom and Marini, and friends Anthony, Evan, Kyle, and Steve. Number two, Trey Drexel. Next up, please welcome number 43, Michael Finke. A graduate year transfer from Illinois, Michael Finke joined his younger brother Tim at GCU for his final season. The versatile big man has hit his stride down the stretch, winning WAC Player of the Week honors two weeks ago, and followed that up Wednesday night with a career best, 38 points versus Eastern New Mexico. The most, the most points scored by a WAC player this season. It was also the second highest scoring total in GCU's Division I history. Finke has started 72 of 117 career games and is averaging a career high 11.8 points and five rebounds this season. Accompanying Michael tonight is his father, Jeff, and brother, Tim. Once again, Michael Finke. And now please welcome number five, the Jackhammer, Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson has been an inspiration for his comeback from five surgeries and a role model for his work ethic and demeanor. In his return to full health this past two years, Matt has been an in indispensable for his ability to defend all positions and also play with versatility and intelligence on offense. He kicked off this WAC season with a 19-point, eight-rebound game in a win against Utah Valley and is shooting a career high 49% from the field this season. With Matt tonight are his parents, Jeff and Kathy, his uncle Andrew, sister Gemma, girlfriend Peyton, and cousin Jake. Once again, the jackhammer, Matt Jackson. And finally, from way down under, number 42, Jared Martin. <laughs> Called the heart and soul of the team by head coach Dan Marley. Martin was playing the best basketball of his career before suffering a season-ending knee injury on February 2nd. He was leading the WAC in three-point percentage at 61.5% and shooting a career-high 49% from the field. But more importantly, Jared had earned a reputation for being the best defensive player in the WAC. He has become a fan favorite and friend of the Havocs and remains a motivator for his team. With Jared this evening is his mother Paula, brother Patrick, and girlfriend Ashlyn. Once again, Jared Martin. Love fans, let's hear it for the senior class. Trey Drexel, Michael Finke, Matt Jackson, and Jared Martin.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Cha Lisa Q. Her friends call her Cha Cha, a junior majoring in worship arts here at GCU. Everyone bow your heads. Abba, you are good and you are faithful, God. And right now, I come humbly before your throne, thanking you for this opportunity of fellowship, God. And right now, I just want to pray for the safety of the players, praying for the safety of the coaches, of the officials, and just everyone in their respectable places, God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Cha-Cha. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by our very own Thundering Herd pep band under the direction of the professor, Paul Cook. Thank you. What a night, homecoming and senior night. Lots of emotions pregame as the Lopes close out their home regular season slate here against CSU Bakersfield. The Roadrunners 16 and 11 this season under head coach Rod Barnes in his eighth season at the helm. Here is coach Barnes starting five. Brought to you by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. Jarkel Joyner, their leading scorer, Ricky Holden. Justin Edler Davis, James Suber, and Greg Lee. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on number two, Ricky Holden, a 5'10", 180-pound senior from Laurel, Mississippi. This guy's an absolute sniper from behind the arc. Shoots 42% from the land of three. Five and six on the road are the road runners. Seven and six in the whack. Now it's time to introduce you to GCU. Trey Drexel, Damari Milstead, senior Matt Jackson, senior Michael Finke, and Carlos Johnson. We're going to keep our eye on number five, the Jack Hammer. Yeah. Matt Jackson, per 40 minutes, only 1.2 turnovers per game, best in the uh, on the team, shoots almost 49% from the field. Love Matt Jackson. Love 17 and 10 in his sixth season as head coach, securing win number 120 against Eastern New Mexico is Dan Marley. The associate head coach, Lewis Wilson. The assistant coaches are Chris Crevelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations, Jesse Parker. Special assistant to the head coach is Johnny Hill. Video coordinator, Matt Lopez. Graduate assistant, Dylan Hidalgo. Director of sports medicine, Jordy Hackett. And the director of sports performance is Gabe Borlinda. Winners of three straight. All over 90 points. Trying to secure that second spot in the Western Athletic Conference. 
battling the Wolverines. Do they battle on the road after this one and close it out against the Red Ox of Seattle? Let's take a look at the Sanderson Ford keys to the game tonight. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, this is all about the seniors on senior night. Yeah, mom and pop. There's no greater sacrifice that's ever been made than a love and support of a mother and a father. Then the underclassmen must go out to lay it all on the line. Make sure you send your seniors out with a dub tonight and then have appreciation. Get loud like a havoc. Communication is the key to playing good defense. Talking and hand signals can be a, go a long way getting deflections, charges, block shots, stops, and run outs. And then this senior moment, this is more of a plot than an actual key of the game, all right? Yeah. So, <laughs> no, that's your kind of senior moment, Barry. The moments of remembering 105 wins and counting for these seniors. Uh, beating New Mexico State and the habit storming the court. I mean, enjoy this moment. You'll never be able to recreate this in life again. Hey, man, what a moment. Most fans remain on their feet until GCU hits the opening bucket. Michael Finke to take it. GCU in control. Milstead crosses center court. Jackson leaves for Finke. Ooh, Fox maybe of a three. Jackson leaves it there for Drexel. Drexel, that's in. Looks left, looks right, back to Finke. 12 on the shot clock. Milstead. Moves left, stops, pops. Not there. Finky. Oh, Matt Jackson trying to save it. Roadrunner's ball. I like the way the Bigs went to the glass on that possession, but the Lopes really didn't get a whole lot of penetration into that Baker's deep, Bakersfield defense. They got to try to drive that ball, get somebody to have to come off their man and then kick it to the corner for the wing for an easy jump shot. Ricky Holden near side. Hot by Milstead. Oh, Milstead picked up. The pass. Jackson takes it to the glass and in. Take a seat. That was the jackhammer. Nice steal by Milstead. Got that run out. Jackson was looking for there. Took that body contact. A year or two ago, he would have even pushed off. He never would have finished that play, but 50 more pounds of upper body strength allowed him to concentrate and make that finish. Three attempt off the mark. Rebound. A little bit. Spectating there by the Lopes. Got to put a body on a yellow jersey. This team is third in the nation in offensive rebound. That's right. Third in the nation. They get on the glass. Greg Lee trying to move on Jackson. Has to push it back out. Holden near side. Diving in is Edler Davis. Stopping and tying the game up at two. Yeah, extra possessions are a killer. That's why you got to get on that glass, defensive glass. Leave one and done. They will make you pay. Ruben Ramos, Rick O'Neill, Klaus Hendrickstadt are the official. Carlos Johnson comes back up top, has a little bit of an opening. I like that move by Carlos Johnson. He, he's turned the switch, figured something out, whatever you want to call it, about the halfway point in this season, realizes there's no reason for me to be out here on the perimeter shooting threes and long jump shots when I can use my power, my strength, and my speed to get inside that painted area and do some damage. Holden, not planted, picks up the first personal foul. Carlos misses the front end. 80% free throw shooter. We wound up here. Davis beyond the arc. Rebound out. Oh, ball. Trey Drexel, he's one of the best defensive rebounders this Lopes team has. And for a while there, he was leading the Western Athletic Conference in, in defensive rebounding. Milstead trying to get it to Carlos, pushes him back away. 
Remember Davis uh, stuck to Johnson there. Back to Finky. Quick three attempt. Not there. That's where that Finky, yeah, he, he, he did so much of his damage against Eastern New Mexico, knocking down six threes. But Roadrunners trying to get their fast break going. Simply threw the ball out of bounds over to Coach Marley. I don't think Coach Barnes or Coach Marley feel their teams are in the groove as of yet. Just underway. Vicky bounce pass. Carlos Johnson stops off the glass. Hoop and a harm. Oh, so smart, so crafty, so physical. Carlos Johnson gets this little oh, they're overplaying Johnson, so he does a smart thing and goes away from the pressure. And that little hesitation before the elevation is able to get the defender off the floor, and draw that body contact. Carlos back at the line. Going to redeem those first two attempts. You see his numbers from uh, Tuesday night, 25 big points. There we go. Three-point play for Carlos. Ricky Holden, the senior from Laurel, Mississippi. Coach Barnes, the one-time coach at Ole Miss, has that Mississippi connection. He's the SEC Coach of the Year and Naismith Coach of the Year as well during his time at Ole Miss. Short. Lopes ball. Lopes doing a nice job defensively. Unfortunately, they just have not been able to get the clean rebound that leads to the fast break. So it's giving the Roadrunners a chance to set their defense. As soon as they start controlling that defensive board, they'll be off and running. Johnson looking to turn the corner. Stop it. In and out. Rebound. Roadrunners quickly up the court. It goes. Joiner. Off the glass and in, their leading scorer, 16.1 points per game. Yeah, you see the speed of the sophomore. Coach Barnes says sometimes he tries to defer to the uh, juniors and seniors on the team instead of being aggressive. Oh, turnover on Demario Milstead with the off arm. Drexel called. Oh, excuse me, they got Drexel off the ball. All guys. But yeah, going back to going back to Jordan, he uses his speed. Here's Drexel trying to get open on that wing there, and just a little too aggressive with that off arm, trying to get that position off the wing. One point GCU lead. Driving up high and off the glass. Nice move there by Joyner. Wow, he is fast. Beep beep. <laughs> Nickname Roadrunner suits him just nice. 27 points on the second against the Lopes. Vicky, three, short. Well, there's Roadrunners up by one. Holden moves right back. Milstead on him. And over to Joyner. Joyner to the baseline. Comes back out. Holden, five on the shot clock. Gonna make a play inside, underneath, not there. Rebound kicked up. Runner and player still off the court. Five on four. Finally gets back on the hardwood. Underneath. And a fortuitous bounce as Greg Lee and falling off the court. Ooh, this is not, not a clinic right now early on here. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. Thank you so much, guys. I am joined by a very special guest tonight, Sharky Baker, who was inducted to the GCU Hall of Fame just about an hour ago. He was on the very first baseball team here at GCU and also played a season of basketball for the Lopes. Congratulations, Sharky. What did the honor mean to you to be inducted to the Hall of Fame? Well, it was it's such a surprise. I didn't, I, I, I didn't expect it. And... It, it means a lot to me because we've had a lot of family here and, and, and they all have all appreciated what Grand Canyon is and, and what it stands for. And it's focus and, and really the uh, um, emphasis that it's put on a university, it, it's just, it's it, 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 it is such, it's such um, a warm feeling to watch the uh, the way they uh, 
are involved in the community and how much they improve the, the, the surroundings. It, it's, it's just... Um, uh, it's special it's, to be a part of, I'm sure. Uh, and it's... It's... Uh, what... It, and I'm sure God has this warm feeling seeing seeing what is yeah. done here. Yeah, a lot of changes. You graduated in 1956. So how has the campus changed from when you were walking around here? Well, I'll tell you what, when I was here, there were just gray buildings everywhere. It was a quad. And the, the administration had gray buildings. And the dorms were gray buildings. And everything was great except the activity center. And that was a Pepsi machine. So, <laughs> so and every day, every day uh, at 10 o'clock, mail came in. The students would gather around that Pepsi machine in the bookstore. And some of them would look for letters from home. My, my, my teammate, was looking for a, a newspaper from home and un, and, and, un, and tear it apart to see if there was a $20 bill in it. <laughs> Such great memories. Thank you so much, Sharky, for sharing your experience here at GCU. And guys, when we drive up to campus, it looks so different to us week to week. I can't even imagine over the span of decades. And Sharky mentioned the family he met here, including his wife, Leona, who used to work at the GCU cafeteria. Yeah, that's awesome. Great story. If you want to go to the GCU YouTube channel and check out the Sharky and Leona love story. There's still that Pepsi machine, by the way, Sharky. <laughs> it still works. Maybe it's not the same one. I bet it cost more than five cents yeah. for soda. Yeah. A little bit. Sharky's machine. The long lineage of bakers here at GCU. Great alumni. 6-0 run for the Roadrunners. Drexel looks for three. That was needed. That'll tie it up real quickly. Trey Drexel. Didn't see him shoot a whole lot of threes this year, but no hesitation when he pulled. Driving, stopping, popping. Oh, look out. Joiner. He's a nice looking player. Got good balance to his game. Already six points in the early going. Bill Stead to his right. Here's Sonny. Turning back, now looks down in the corner. Jackson up over the top to Drexel. Drexel kicks it back out. Carlos pulls down beyond the arc. Eight on the shot clock. Milstead, five. Got to do something quickly. Jackson, three on the shot clock. He just throws it on. Air ball. A real good position, uh, possession that time for the for the Lopes. They Never really got into their half-court set. And not playing good basketball where they're helping one another score early on. I mean, he had 31 assists against Eastern New Mexico, but haven't seen the fluid offense they had on Tuesday night. Players making their way over to the scorer's table. Ali Labor and Oscar Freyer. Taz Moore in for Greg Lee. Hold it. Moves right. Now steps back. Carlos Johnson eyeing him. Moves to his left. Finky takes over. Back over Edler Davis. Inside and off the glass past Michael Finky. Darren Person Jr. Well, they switched out on that play and they tried to switch back before Finky was on up the three point line. They wanted to switch back, but you can't leave a guy. Right underneath the basket with nobody guarding. Oh, sloppy, sloppy. Milstead's pass attempt to Finky picked off. Joiner peels back in the corner. Moore. Backing in on Jackson. Right hand, and it drops. A hoop and a harm. All muscle for Darren Person Jr. Yeah, a good muscle play, but he got away with a travel. He ends up switching his pivot foot. You give Mac Jackson a lot of credit. He stays with him right here, but he switches his pivot foot. Gets away with the walk, and he gets the foul call because Jackson's all confused. Like, how did he get from one side back to his other side? Well, that's why sometimes the officials will miss a play and give it to the guy who's being a bit more aggressive with the ball. They got a 
realize, too, that a lot of these guys are on the floor aren't used to generally playing with one another. You know, Oscar yeah. Frizz normally on that starting lineup, a little Ollie Labor, to get those guys back in there. And you see now the offense get a little more continuity. That these are the guys that have played together in games and have played each, uh, with each other in practice all the time. Carlos Johnson driving. Oh. Travel. Oh. Now, did, he, did he walk because someone's chest got in his way, or did he walk before someone's chest got in his way? Well, I like the fact that when they're str struggling, to, struggling to score, Ooh. that he took it hard to the hole. One of those bang bang plays maybe could have gone either way. So, Labor and Frey are on the court. Near side lead, kick back out. Opposite side to Moore. Moore. Freyer hand in his face. Lee. Durham. Back to Lee. Short on the three. Good defense. You'll love with Lee taking that long three point jump shot. Long three. Heavy. Big rebound. Joiner. On the run, stops. Pops doesn't go. Rebound. Oh, careful. Loose ball. Lee comes up with it. Yeah, so look at the white jerseys leaking yeah. out before they got the ball. In and out. This time, Johnson. Yeah, they're bailing early, aren't they? Gotta stay in there. This is one of those teams. They'll send two, three guys to the boards every time. And if it doesn't get corralled cleanly, they generally have a jersey ready to jump on it. Reach in by Moore, knocked it out. This time out coming at the right time. This yeah. offense needs to try to find itself. 11.33 on the clock, 14-8. Bakersfield on top early. The seniors got the start, and the regulars are back in there, and they're trying to regroup right now and come back against the Roadrunner. in the heart of Phoenix, GCULopes.com. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game on your view and GCU.tv is brought to you by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness, by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. And by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and the homecoming court. Were you ever on the homecoming court? <laughs> now wasn't good looking enough to be on the home court. Yeah. court. It's a good looking group. They'll announce the king and queen later on in the game. What, wasn't one of our players one year on the homecoming court? Was that Josh Braun? Uh, I, I think that would be a good guess. If that, I believe that might have been the case. I would think the mayor probably would be on the court. Daniel Alexander, maybe. That's Rich Reed, our producer. Uh, good call. I think Daniel it was Alexander. Daniel Alexander. Yeah. I believe he's playing over in Europe now. There's so many other former Lopes. Dwayne Russell, Keontae Vernon, Josh Braun heading down to Australia. Yeah, I think even Jared Martin, he says he's going to go uh, rehab down in Australia and get that knee strong and... Uh, uh, give it a chance to play a little pro ball down in Australia. Yeah, that's a good picture of uh, Martin there. Yeah, emotional night for Jared Martin not being able to play. Uh, mom's here. Of course, he wore number 42 because his father passed away at the age of 42. 
Milstead, short. Holden. Bounce pass. Trying to turn and drive. Edler Davis around Labor. No option. Had to push it back out. Durham stops, pops. Good. Roadrunners playing well here early. Yeah, they are. And I, and I like that defensive possession. It's like Oscar Ferrer really went out there and threw the man off of that three point line, but he knocked down a good mid range jump shot. Sometimes good offense, just good defense. Labor put it into an 8 0 run. Good to see a bucket come inside by Ollie Labor. He can really do some damage to this Roadrunner team in that painted area with his up and unders and left uh, shoulder turn for right hand hook and vice versa. Silver, Durham off balance. Ow. Labor needs to get some of that thinky magic. It's too big, so they're playing well down the stretch. Labor open for three. Short. Rebound picked up by Edler Davis. Lopes team outside of one three by Drexel. Been very cold from the outside. Ricky Holden. She just one of six from behind the arc. Coach Barnes with that jacket off already. Very animated. Holden off of the feet of Labor, center court. Just four on the shot clock. Good defense there for the Lopes. Threw him out. Joiner back in. Heather Davis brings it in. Little collision there. Throws it up. Short. Shot clock violation. Well, Lopes knew they had a short shot clock to work with. And the two guys came together on that ball screen. They just jumped all over it and trapped it. Nice job defensively by the Lopes. Milstead crosses center court. Joyner is eyeing him. Bounce pass. Michael Finke turns. Up over the top to Labor. He's double teamed underneath. Freyer kicks back out. Milstead for three. Bam! Well, <laughs> right on cue, Milstead put a three right in my mouth, said I. I'll show you Cole from the outside. I'm going to knock this three ball down. Oh, no. He can't be napping, though. Boy, that was a beauty how that dropped. Joiner, oh, he's so quick uh, moving towards that basket. Milstead with that patented floater this time off the window. Back to back bucket for Milstead. Coach Barnes not real happy with his team defensively. They don't like when guys get down there below the free throw line on the, off the dribble. Now this is just saying, okay, you think you're fast, I'll show you how good I am to my strong hand. Nobody comes over and helps out in time, and Milstead made him pay. Milstead, he's been really steady yep. uh, when he's come back in this, as a starter in this starting group. Moore and Labor kind of got tangled in uh, together underneath the hoop. Barnes brings Moore out, doesn't want anything to distract from his team on the court. Ah, stop. Short rebound, Freyer. I like that double teaming the post. Led to a disjointed offensive set for the Roadrunners that time. Not real good at passing out of that double team. Three rebounds for Freyer. Wow. Looks like Holden again. Second on him. Hasn't been a lot of foul calls in this game. Just three for the Roadrunners, only two for GCU. Officials really letting them play. Oh, the runners are tight. Labor, give him a little bit of room there. At the feet, he tried to bounce it. Loose ball, Roadrunners bring it up. Edward Davis, bounce pass underneath and off the glass for Joyner. I'll tell you what, I thought maybe the Roadrunners got away with a kick ball there. No protest from Dan Marley, so maybe I had it wrong, but they are really active and long defensively. Quick and active hands. Fire so is Carlos Johnson. Carlos Johnson had a big first half against Eastern New Mexico, and he's off to another nice start tonight, mixing up an outside and inside game. Holden moves left. Big turn, kicks back out. Nobody home except Milstead. Damari Milstead. 
Hug. No, he's not even going to try. Greg Lee says, no, nope, no, nope, not even going to let you go. Time out on the court. 7.45 on the clock. Now, Martin Milstead does a nice job jumping on that loose ball. And then he's just off to the races. Tries to take an intentional foul there. Make Milstead earn it from the free throw line. Well, early on, the uh, Roadrunners coming out strong. And what Coach Barnes has talked about in this uh, five of the last six that haven't gone their way, that it's the second half where they haven't been able to carry that momentum coming out of the gate on fire. They just haven't done it in the second half. Sometimes that happens when, you know, it's the, the team is on the road or maybe just a little fatigued. It, the good thing for the Lokes is that they've been absolutely wonderful in the second half of basketball yeah. games lately. He put a couple 50s on that scoreboard in the second half. Scott, we talked about Jarkel Joyner uh, leading uh, this team in points per game and really the conference overall, but he's looked sharp here in the opening half. Yeah, no sophomore slump for this young man. He has been absolutely sensational. He could really showcase his speed and quickness. He's got good ball handling skills. That old school mid range game uh, is uh, on display. And, share the basketball well with a nice little pass and he runs the floor they have five of seven from the field he's already got 10 points in this one and count let's take a look at the bsn sports calendar for gcu sports bsn sports the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country northern colorado softball tomorrow tennis against portland on the fourth nevada here for baseball at browser field at gcu ballpark Utah Valley on the seventh, women's hoops. Beach volleyball taking on the Lobos. Illinois in town to take on the baseball team on the eighth. Men's tennis, men's volleyball, women's basketball coming up. From the WAC tournament on the 13th, the men will start on the 14th. See Liberty at USC coming to Antelope Gymnasium on the 14th. And again, that WAC tournament starts the 14th for the men, the 13th for the women. We hope to see you in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. We need the full support of GCU. I'm feeling good about it. I mean, Lopes playing some good basketball right now, getting some really good contributions from Carlos Johnson and Michael Finke. Labor's starting to find his rhythm again. Of course, Oscar Frere, he's taking on a new leadership role, being the team going after the guy who's the best player on the other team. So. I think this could be the year. New Mexico State always will be tough, but I think this is the year GCU gets it done. Fragrant one called. And the game is now time. I just don't like that call. <laughs> there should be a way to be able to take a smart foul and make a guy earn it from the free throw line. And in my opinion, the defender did exactly what he's supposed to do. He went over and wrapped up guy with a breakaway layup yep. and uh, prevented him from getting getting the layup without trying to hurt the play. Labor inside the arc. Got to get a little closer, apparently. Vinky looking to get on the board, too. Labor's just got two. There's a, there's a foul on the defense, and then just the third team foul on GCU. No damage done. I think he's first. Is there a such thing as an intentional foul anymore? Is, or is everything a flagrant now when you don't really make a play on the ball? I, I, even at the pro level, I, I see guys getting whistled for a lot of flagrant fouls that I thought it should just be intentional foul calls. It's like Laver's going to be called underneath. Oh, he just, just seems a little like he just keep. Stay in control. He got tangled up down there with one of the bigs. He talk about how hard these roadrunners go to the offensive glass. <laughs> you, yeah. you, may, you may pick up a foul or two like Whoa. that tonight. Oh, tried to redeem himself right there. Good play by Labor. Fortunately, went out of bounds. Hey, you know, everyone's working hard right now. Yeah. It's just something about senior night that sometimes can really throw a team off a little out, out of kilter. And that's kind of what you're witnessing tonight. Joiner moves left, kick back out, Durham stops, way up high and in, wow. That one drew rain on the way down. 
Nice mid-range game there. We talked a lot about Durham, the redshirt senior, in previous years. Averaging 10.2 points per game. Get into three, leads the road runners in that category. Johnson step back three, heavy. Rebound, all runners. Joiner moves left, back out. Joiner a long three, not gonna happen. Labor. Johnson, baseline drive, goes right. Big right hand, draws the foul. Now, Johnson could have settled for that mid range jumper, but again, he's understanding where he does his best damage, and he takes kind of a long Euro step to get to the bucket right here, get to the outside frame of that defender, and get that body contact, and that's gonna be a block every time. In the conference, you see how he's performing. Mm -hmm. Almost 15 points a game, most of them on drives, such as one we just witnessed there. I don't always see him use that long Euro step, but does a nice job generally with power and explosion around the basket. Tim Finke in for his older brother, Michael. And the game is tied. Tim his last three free throws look a heck of a lot better than his first two, that's for sure. He first two, he clinked hard off the back iron and settled himself down here. He's having a good first half. Trey Drexel back at the scorer's table waiting back into the game. Joiner moves left. Bill Stead, Einhorn, back out front. Other Davis, a long three attempt. That's heavy. Joiner is there, but a whistle is called. Yeah, this time, he got knocked both Oscar Frere and Laver down to the floor. These guys go hard to the rack. Yeah, one more time, they're down there wrestling an alligator, 700-pound <laughs> alligator down there under that basket. He took, he took out a couple of uh, white shirts. Just to see the picture of that 700 pound gator they got yeah. down there. Ooh, well, no part of that. No. 16 feet long, his little gator arm grab you. Oh, that's my worst fight. Lived in Florida right along the uh, Everglades at one point in my life. And I had alligators in that canal behind our home. Here. These are like dinosaurs. They really are. <laughs> One more time here, Labor showing a good pump fake, and then just says, I'm gonna got more, a few more kilos and Mike shorts than you got, and I'm gonna try to back you down low. That took too much body on, and Labor's gonna go to the line. Super, they're a top offensive rebounder in the whack, draws that foul. Leads the runners with, coming into the game, 212 rebounds. Just front of the one on one. Don't see Labor miss too many at the line. Joiner peels back out. Mills that eye him. Looking for some help. Finds it from Suber. Good work all by Joiner. <laughs> he was a one man wrecking crew that time. <laughs> he sliced through that white shirt of defense like a hot knife in butter. Went by three lopes defending. How you doing? Keep up this frenetic pace in the second half. Milstead almost lost it. Johnson pulls down baseline, kicks back out. Drexel pulls down the three. Step back inside the arc. Now he gets it over to Labor for three. Oh. Grief. Exactly. You know, it's one of those possessions. It looks really good. The ball movement was sharp. They got it from side to side, which is generally a good thing for the offense. But guys were turning down good looks. I thought that, you know, Trey Drexel had a good look. Carlos Johnson's first one uh, on the baseline would have been a nice look. It's, it's, it's nice to be unselfish, but sometimes a good first look may be the best look of the possession. Going for three from the arc. Labor will take a seat. Michael Finke back in. Joiner. Wants Suber to come out. Check that. Person Jr. He hits the floor pretty hard. The guy with the towel is getting a lot of work tonight, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's a lot of bodies going down on the floor, both ends. And this is a tough one right here because 
get Finky that comes and just kind of got into the game. He's got to switch on to somebody coming off a, a screen, and it's tough to measure that speed if he's sitting over on that pine for a while. And he just was able to turn the corner on Finky. Heather Davis at the line. Seventy-eight percent free throw shooter. Money on both. You know, just because these road runners have lost the five of their last six, didn't mean that they weren't going to try to come in here and spoil senior night. They they are up for the task. They're playing with a lot of energy right now. California Baptist spoiled their senior night. They'd like to turn the tables on the Lopes here tonight. Drexel. Quite sure how. That transpired there it was a little out of control. Joiner. It's a tough matchup here for Finky on Joiner. Stopping. Short. Drexel with the rebound. He leads the Lopes. Milstead. Bounce pass. Up for Tim Finky. Stops. He's going to be fine. Great break by the Lopes. Very nice job by Milstead catching that outlet pass and then quickly turning his vision up the floor and seeing Finky streaking wide open deliver a strike. Person with a couple. For the runner. That's where I think Milstead has gotten so much better. His ability to be able to Find all of his teammates out on the floor offensively to get them involved. Pull them back in with two. Yeah, he's just playing with a ton of confidence. Wouldn't you agree, Barry? Oh, yeah, for sure. He's got confidence in his little mid range game, his float game, his outside shots. Always been good. He was really good at three point shooter a year ago. I think he led the low three point field goal percentage last season. And now he's putting it all together with a little more experience. Lopes have made seven field goals and seven free throws. Trail by two. Joiner. Milstead. Six on the shot clock. Durham. Back to Joiner. Very long three. Off the rim. Rebound. Michael Finke. Oh, two good stops there by the Lopes. Second of stops. That's, just, that's where you'd love to keep Jordan the rest of the night out on that three-point arc. Won't happen, but you'd love to see it if you could. Michael Finke back to Milstead. Drexel. Back to Finke. Hide the three. Inside to Tim. Oh. Trying to get a pass underneath, I believe, to Carlos. Hey, right at the rim. Shoot yeah. yourself. Shoot it. Johnson went up high. Three minutes and counting opening half. Milstead, loose ball underneath, rolls it back. Johnson, over to Finke in the corner. Both teams looking for a bucket. Yeah, Finke as hot as he was against wow. Eastern New Mexico, those 38 points and six threes. He has not been able to score anything tonight in this first half. So, well, he did have 27 points in the second half. Maybe he'll come back in the second half and, and light up that scoreboard. Weather Davis cramping up here. Timeout on the court, 243. The Roadrunners up 26-24. We'll be right back. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Santa and Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. 
Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit GCUHotel.com today. We have a two-point game with just over two to go in the first half here at GCU Arena. It's homecoming night as well as senior night. The Lips trailing by two to the Roadrunners. And it's a special night for seniors and also the special students on campus. These are the homecoming candidates for 2019. On the Queen side, Haley Prelip, a junior business management major. Julia Trujillo, a senior English major. Courtney Casimir is a senior healthcare administrator major, and Kenzie Hayes, senior marketing major. Representing the King selection, Miles Williams, senior biology major, junior science major, Nathan Landis, junior biology major, KJ Jackson, and senior business management major, Josh Roberts. The court was out on the basketball court just a few moments ago in front of the Havocs crowd. And a little bit later in the game, the Lopes will crown this year's homecoming queen and king. Now back to our keys of the night, right guys? You guys. Who, you or me? What's that? Kings. You're both kings. Oh, we're both kings. Kings? Until one of you yeah. dethrones the other. What does that mean wow. exactly, kings? I don't, it means you better, I don't like my better chances against game. the uh, former <laughs> NBA champion. <laughs> Four feet taller than I am. Homecoming court. Oh, I get reach it. Reach like three feet longer than mine. There's only one queen, though, right? That's right. Yep. She's the best. Talk about doing a good job now. After struggling the first half of this first half on the offensive glass, now the Lopes are putting body on body, forcing these road runners to come over the top, where they've committed a number of fouls. Sometimes going to send Finky down the line. This could be what Finky needs here. A trip to the free throw line. Be able to work on your stroke and visualize that ball going through that basket. Maybe he can finish this last two and a half minutes with something positive. Give him some confidence coming out of that locker room in the second half. Oh, now you've put a lot of pressure on this young man. He's a fifth year senior. He can handle it. Of course he can. There's dad. In the battle of a high school basketball season up in... Yeah, he's in the Illinois. state tournament, right? Is he in this team in the sure. state tournament? Yeah, I think they're close. I think I saw on social media that they had a big overtime victory. It was a one-point win. Nice. So I got my state uh, tournament. Oh, OT? One, one, no, one, wasn't OT, but it's a one-point win. 54-53. What did you have in there, like 40? They were close. No, it was it was, it was a close game. I think it was 20-something. But once we got through the southern section, getting through the state tournament was uh, pretty pretty simple. We ended up blowing everybody out, mostly by 20 points. Pressure applied by the runners. Milstead trying to dish it out. Finky, Michael pulls down the three. Takes it underneath. Freyer. Oh, we can't put it home. Coming in is Drexel. Hustling in. Trey Drexel, the senior. Oh, the lid came off this place. Loving that extra effort there by Trey Drexel. He loves it. He's out there clapping and barking. That's the kind of emotion that this team needs going into the locker. Get some minimum into that locker room, coach. Oh, then an offensive foul. 6-0 run for GCU. Their first lead since it was 5-4. Timeout. Look at this one more time. They dish it underneath here to Oscar Frere. He's just not able to finish it. And Drexel not giving up on the play. Just outworked everybody to that basketball and then put it in reverse underneath the basket. Little English on the ball off the glass. And then <laughs> tell me that kid doesn't want to go out with a dub on his senior night. 119 on the clock. Lopes up by two. I ever tell you, I'm on senior night in North Carolina. Yeah. We were playing Georgia Tech with Dennis Scott, Kenny yeah. Anderson. You lit it up. I, I went for 26. Yeah. Walked out of there with, with, the, with the dub, but it came down to the final possession. And a guy named Brian Oliver, I don't know if you remember that name, just a really good player. Averaged 20 points in senior year, led the ACC in rebounds and assists. Well, no, assist, rebounds, and points. Combination of assist, rebounds, and points that year. Stepped on the out-of-bounds line. 
before he could get off the game tying or winning three. Bounce pass. Oh, it's picked off by Drexel. He has put on the afterburner. Yeah, that kid's play hard. Drexel. Jackson open for three. Oh, it doesn't go. I want Matt Jackson to make that shot right there. It's place with a gun. Bananas. You know what's great? How many years in the NBA did you play? 15 seasons. 15 seasons. And that senior night at North Carolina is as vivid as yesterday for you. That's quite me that's because the memories of your college basketball career. This is why nights like tonight for these seniors are so special. They'll never forget it. Oh, absolutely. Hey, college basketball is something that you can't recreate. I mean, there's a lot of teams in the Golden Pros and a lot of different things happen for professional basketball. That, I don't want to say taint the game, but it kind of changes the feel of the game. It doesn't have the raw emotion that you experience here with the Havocs on a nightly basis, walking around campus with your other student body members. And, being able to get the love after a win, yeah, it's something special that you can't recreate at the next level. The upcoming schedule for GCU. They close out the regular season slate, then they're at Utah Valley. Now the Wolverines currently tied with the Lopes, nine and four in the conference. Then it's at Seattle to close it out. That WAC tournament begins March 14th for the men, the 13th for the women. Orleans Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, Hope to see you there. Need a sea of purple at that Orleans Arena. Bottle of the likes of the top seed, the New Mexico State Aggies. Mm -hmm. on the road, tune in to Michael Potter. Paul Coral will be along. 1580, the Fanatic, 99.3 FM. Tied at 28, 14, 13 on the clock. Milstead, Labor, turns, short. Runners, will they get off a shot here at the buzzer? Joiner's hands for three. Oh, that's just nasty. You almost thought it was going to happen. Jarkel Joiner, the wax leading scorer, runs into that room with the momentum behind him. 31 28. Down to Kate. All right, thank you. Well, Coach, the Roadrunners started off that got that first whistle, and now the team, your team, able to climb back in. What did you see from the Lopes in the first half? Well, I mean, 31's not bad. I think we're breaking down on our communication, the ball screen, but uh, we got to rebound the ball, which we didn't do early, and that was a big emphasis, and then we got to make some shots. Uh, 28 points is not very good. And you guys were able to, just now the Roadrunners taking that lead, but this has been a neck and neck game. So what does the team that wants the W tonight need to do to close well, out the We knew it was going to be a battle for 40 minutes. That's a good team. They play really hard. we got to control the backboards and got to find a way to start making some shots. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan Marley going to address his team. And uh, guys, you know he always says he wants the W. Always, but especially in front of this home crowd, and on the last regular season of the season of the year here, I think he really wants that victory. So we'll see what he has to say to his players. Currently, the Roadrunners out rebounding the Lopes, 20 to 16, and they're up by three after Jarkel Joiner hits the three at the buzzer. Runners up, 31-28. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GCU Arena in Phoenix after we take this timeout. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Hi, I'm Brittany, and this is Ask Easy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU. Where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers 
to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, pro in a, all right. I'm a professional man. <laughs> Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. Welcome back, homecoming and senior night here at GCU Arena. And the Havocs right now being entertained by Christian and Scooby. And in the first half, the Lopes try to give this crowd a lot to cheer about. They scored 28 points. It was tied until the buzzer when the Roadrunners pulled ahead. It is now 31-28 at the break. Talking to Dan Marley, he's pleased with the performance so far from his team, but they got to go out there and play just a little bit more intense to get the victory. Kate Longworth welcoming you in here to the halftime show on the Lopes Halftime Show here on Your View. And I'm joined now by Jamie Boggs, GCU Deputy of Athletes Director. Thank you so much for being here with us. And it's such a big week on campus. We talked about homecoming, senior night, and so many alumni in the house. Take me through what has been taking place here on campus. What's the atmosphere been like? Oh, we've had all the alumni back. Uh, we have our Hall of the Fame introduction. It's been so great to have everyone back. You know, if you talk to our students right now, what they'll tell you is that one of the greatest things about GCU is the community feel of our campus. And for the alumni to come back and to experience the community, re-experience that community around a basketball game has been really great. Yeah, it's hot fun. Yeah, I say, talking to some of the alumni, they're so impressed with the growth here on campus. And I know they've been following the Lopes basketball teams, and they'll continue doing that throughout March. Big tournament, black tournament in Vegas, March 13th through 16th. What are you anticipating with these Lopes squads as they try to punch their first ticket to the NCAA tournament? Um, I, I think I heard you ask about the WAC tournament. Well, so we've been working on getting as many people as we can to go to the WAC tournament, uh, March 13th through 16th at the Orleans Arena. Uh, we want to really reach out to our local community, our local nation, our season ticket holders, our fans, our alumni and students, and get them out there and help them paint the Orleans Arena purple with as many fans as we can. Uh, it means a lot to our team and to our coaches to have all that fan support out there. So we want to drive as many people out there as possible. Yeah, we know how powerful that six man can be and we've seen that in action last year at the tournament. And we know it'll also be a big run for the Lopes squad with so many key seniors on this squad. We said it a lot tonight, but kind of a bittersweet night because there are four very special seniors on this team. You've watched their careers each and every night out here. What do you think those guys have done to shape this Lopes basketball squad? Well, Matt and Jared have worked really two on some of the first recruits that uh, Dan recruited out here. And so they really choose some of the first ones to really believe in the vision for GCU basketball. Uh, so they're really important for our program. Jared, defensively, he's been one of the defensive, best defensive players in the conference. Um, and he, he brings so much leader to the team. We felt so heartbroken about his injury, but he's, come, he's still on the, on the sidelines and he's so impactful. Uh, the other person's Matt Jackson, such a gritty hard worker. He's had five surgeries, but he's come back. We'll miss his shot that he makes at the end of the game, uh, but he still he brings so much to, to our team. Also, the other two seniors, Drake Brexel, he came from Division II and has really improved himself as a Division I player. He's been so fun to watch. And uh, Michael Finke, he's been a, a wonderful player for us this year. Uh, he's had a career year, uh, scoring 36 and I think 38 points in the last couple games. Um, he's been off the court. He's been a spiritual leader for our program. So he's been everything that Coach Marley expected him to be. So yes, it's bittersweet that they're playing their last regular season game here. But at the same time, they have bright futures ahead of them. And we're so excited for that. And it's also an exciting time for GCU sports fans because during March, you're seeing a lot of great quality basketball, but also baseball in full swing, as well as softball and so many of the other spring sports. But when you look over at what Andy Stankwitz is doing in the state-of-the-art facility with Brazel Field at the new GCU ballpark, what are you anticipating for the Lopes season ahead on the diamond? Uh, Coach Stankiewicz has done an outstanding job with our baseball program. He really has made the baseball program a championship caliber program. Uh, and really since the start of when we announced going from Division II to Division I, he had a plan in place. He really focused on non-conference scheduling and scheduling some of the tough teams out there, the Arkansas and TCU. Uh, and, and because we played that, those tough teams, we've been able to win conference regular season championships back to back. So moving forward, uh, 
we can still continue to see that progress. We're now beating really top teams out there. We just beat USC this past weekend at Southern Cal. We just beat a top 20 program in TCU last week. And we beat Wichita State our first weekend uh, during the home opener. So we really think that baseball has the potential to be a championship caliber, both at the conference and national level. All right, thank you so much, JB, for joining us, shedding light on to GCU Athletics. And now we're going to go to a quick break. Christian and Scooby just finishing off their act behind us on the basketball court. And then we will take you upstairs where Barry and Scott will break down first half highlight scores and much, much more. We'll be right back right after this. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a center. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Lopes trailing the Roadrunners 31-28 at the half on homecoming and senior night here at GCU. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you as uh, Jarkel Joyner hits the uh, buzzer beater to close out the half, hits the three to propel Bakersfield into the lead. How good was that kid in that first half? Woo, he was on fire. It's time to check out our Dignity Health halftime highlights and stats. Dignity Health, hello, human kindness. Milstead with a steal, and Matt Jackson puts it all. Yeah, Milstead, he's fantastic in this first half. Really steady out there, and I love the way Jackson takes that contact and finishes there. And then Joyner just showing that he's just too fast for any of those guys in the white shirts. Goes right to the bucket with that road runner like speed and then Trey Drexel on senior night dropping him one over the top of the defense for three and then I'd like this one inside just a bucket inside they were better in the paint in that first half this one another one but Milstead out there behind the arc knocking down to three then still here and they're off and Ryan and then Joyner gets one of his or two of his 17 points on that layup and Carlos Johnson, he pulls up, trigger there for three, knocked down 10 in that first half, and then Drexel one more time, showing that uh, he does not want to leave this floor with a L, and he wants to get that W out, working everybody, and then Busby, oh my goodness, Joyner's just so good at getting that basketball and up the court so quickly, gets into his shooting range, not a three-point shooter, but clutch from that distance to send it to the half. Bakersfield up on the Lopes by three. You see the field goal percentage. Lopes just 33.3. Three is one of 10 to three of 12. Free throws nine of 12. Rebounding margin in favor of the runners and points in paint. They're owning at 18 to 10. Labor with two points. Michael Finke with two points. Yeah, Carlos Johnson misspoke. He's only he's got six points, not 10 points. They're not just taking they're not taking care of the basketball enough. 10 turnovers in the first half will not make Coach Marley happy. All right, Kate will be back in just a moment. We are ever so close to the start of the second half here from GCU Arena in Phoenix. The Lopes trailing by three. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, 
If you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. And as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere. So you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. We welcome you back with the Streets of New York leading scores from the first half Streets of New York, pizza, pasta, and more. The Roadrunner shooting 45% with Joyner leading the way for the entire game. He's leading all scores with 17 points, including that buzzer beater to give the Roadrunners a three-point lead heading into the break. Meanwhile, for the Lopes, Johnson with seven. Michael Finke coming off that 38-point game, just two points to his name on a very special senior night. So we expect the seniors to step it up in the second half as they recall their memories. It's been an unforgettable experience, you know. Um, you know, play in front of such a great, you know, home atmosphere. Um, we will play for a coach with, you know, uh, unlimited knowledge about the game and, you know, really um, pushing me to, you know, to find uh, new levels in myself and, you know, and, and also in my basketball game. And so I think this year, you know, it's forced me to grow up fast, you know, moving away from home. But uh, um, it's just been an unforgettable experience and I think I've grown in so many ways, both personally and, you know, um, in my basketball game. It's been awesome. Uh, just from day one getting on campus, I've been welcomed in by the coaching staff, the players. Uh, campus, really the community, just uh, really welcomed me with open arms and uh, it's a decision I always cherish to be able to play here with my brother and uh, really trying to make this university proud. I mean we have so many people that are involved with this university that uh, really expect a lot out of us so hopefully we can keep winning and make them proud and uh, go on and win in, in Vegas but uh, really just really just trying to cherish everything and not take anything for granted. It's taught me a whole lot, um, you know moving away from home um, and pretty much, you know, almost starting a new life over here. So, uh, you, you know, classes, basketball, everything, you know, it, it's shaping me into the person I am. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. This university has meant the world to me. They've done uh, unbelievable things since I've been here for five years. And they've treated me with, uh, the, treated me the best I could possibly ask for. So uh, it's definitely got a soft spot in my heart. And some of the memories, there's, there's too many with all the basketball memories, school life, the people I've met. Uh, it's just been unbelievable. But there's obviously a few little things, especially those big wins in GC Arena that I'm always going to remember and I'm definitely going to miss. Lots of memories for the seniors here at GCU. Jared Martin, uh, one comes to mind when he had that late game steal against San Diego State, jumped up on the uh, scores table right in front of us. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Havix went crazy. Yeah, I remember they, they beat New Mexico State here. And Coach Marley was screaming at the top of his lungs doing his interview, and uh, the student body stormed onto the floor. It, it, you know, 105 wins for uh, Jackson and Martin over the course of his career. Quite, be quite proud of that. Most fans remain in on their feet till they hope to hit that opening bucket quickly as the runners in control, but they give it up. Holden loses. Barnes disagrees adamantly, but was the call. Michael Finke, Carlos Johnson, right there by Edler Davis at the start tonight. Labor stops, leaves for Carlos. Carlos loses the handle and it's picked off. Sloppy start to the second half, and Jarkel Joyner is fouled by Oscar Freire. Well, we talked about the 10 turnovers in the first half. When they come out here on their first possession after getting a good stop, turned the basketball over an 11th time. 
And Joyner, he, he would have probably scored this bucket, but he stumbled at the beginning. And then I like that by Frere not giving up the easy bucket. It's going to make Joyner earn it from the free throw line. First trip to the line tonight. 69% free throw shooter, Jarkel Joyner. That's really the first miscue. That's about the only thing that yeah. gets done right. Like Eight of 12 in the first half of the field, and that buzzer beat three gave the Roadrunners the momentum going in the locker room. Four point Bakersfield lead. Just underway, second half. Finky moves right, leaves for Carlos Johnson. Does the same for Milstead. Comes back out on top, looks for three. Short, rebound, all yellow. They were chilly in the first half from behind the arc, and they were banging away early. One of six to start the game. They, they need some buckets in that painted area and try to slash them to that disadvantage, the 18 to 10 disadvantage points in the paint. Laver's going to be called. Yeah, Laver trying to get around in three quarters that uh, front that post. But he's got his left, his left arm is wrapped around the offensive player here as he's trying to get around the defender. That left arm starts pulling back and you start locking arms like that. They're going to get you every time. They did that first half. A little bit more, I believe. This time with Suter. Barnes brought more out when it happened. In the corner, Lee. Rebound, Freyer climbs up. Well, Lee's taken a couple of long shots. and had, He's got good looks, but he hadn't been able to measure the range. Waver. Johnson drives, twists, turns. Fouled. Well, you know, Labor wanted Johnson to kind of come off of that dribble handoff to his left, but Carlos Johnson is such a better player coming to the right. He goes kind of away from the screen and takes on two defenders and gets that contact and has himself a trip to the line. That's where he's at his best, and he stands on that right side of that floor and just puts his chin down and takes it hard to the rack. Bolden, Edler Davis. Lee, each shot, two personal fouls. Holden's going to check back out early here, second half. Durham in. against California Baptist in their loss at home. Edler Davis takes it off balance, gets the rebound and puts it home. Oh. Tough break that time. Lopes did a pretty good job until he turned the corner. The first shot was just kind of one of those dump in passes in hockey where they just dump it down into the zone and they just crash the glass and get it in. Finky for three, doesn't go. They started the first half slow. They only had eight points in the first eight and a half minutes in the first half. They're off to another slow start here. Just a free throw by Carlos Johnson. Heather Davis leaves it there. Coming back out, Greg Lee. Back to Adler Davis. Redshirt sophomore, long distance, off the mark. Labor there. Good job boxing out by Labor, making sure he was going to secure that side rebound. Milstead cuts in, stops. Short, air ball. Finky, back into Milstead. Swatted away. Here come the Roadrunners. Joiner to Durham. Not going to happen, but the tap back is. Spectators underneath the glass. <laughs> Getting out worked right now by the Roadrunners, but tenacity is not there for the Lopes. And the Roadrunners are just feeling real good about their game right now, saying we can outwork this team. Michael Finke off the window. Welcome to the party, pal. First bucket for Finke tonight. I don't know what it is. I just want to see a different body language from Labor. Up to Freyer. Freyer for three. 
pushing off underneath. I can think he's doing a nice job going through that glass. Milstead got this one back. They <laughs> just say, you shall not pass. It led to the run out the other way. Joiner's so quick, and all they really trying to do is just get that thing up on that glass and going and get it. Got guys like Holden and Joiner really getting out and running. Lee, Durham, they're just having some fun. Runners, I like that. That's what they're doing. They're just getting out and running. Finky, labor. Near side, Michael Finky. High by Lee. Inside, labor kicks out. Johnson slashes in. Swarmed. Foul. Nice job passing out of the double team, finding the open man. I love that Carlos Johnson didn't just hang out on that perimeter. He sees his teammate get double teamed. His man went to the basket, ball, and he just went right to the basket. Good job by Labor delivering a strike. And I like that. Don't shy away from the contact. Don't shy away from the shot blockers. Just take it right to the hole. Fortunately, Carlos Johnson struggled from that free throw line right now. Just four of eight from the charity strike. Those are three points. Johnson again. Lead is four for Bakersfield. Holden brings it up. Suber. Durham. Inside. Backing in. Turning off the window. Not going to happen. Up quickly. Michael Finke, Milstead, Carlos Johnson. Johnson slices in and rolls in off the front of the rim. Beautiful break. Really got that ball into the scoring area quickly, taking a page out of the runner's book. Lead is now two for Bakersfield. Person Jr. takes it. Loose ball underneath the runners off of the window and in. How many times are we going to see second chance points off of offensive rebounds with point blank range? Got to move people out of there. They're just throwing the ball up and going after it. Super. Ten second chance points. Oh my. Travel labor. I think labor wanted a kick out pass, thinking he was going to get some help from the wing, but if it didn't come, there was nobody to pass it to. He just took a bunny hop. 15.09 on the clock. Timeout on the floor. Four point lead now for Bakersfield. Down to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. I am joined by a couple of students from Students Inspiring Students, an incredible uh, program here at GCU. Brianna and Louise are with me right now. And Louise, how did you find out about Students Inspiring Students Scholarship and know that GCU was a great fit for you? I found out about the scholarship from my friends and family. A lot of them were actually uh, people who got the scholarship, and I didn't really know about GCU that much. I always knew it was around the corner, but then when I went into the community, I realized it was such a positive community here. There are so many people, smiles all around, everyone saying hi, and I found out that it was a great place for me because I just enjoyed the atmosphere so much. It's absolutely incredible program, a way of GCU students giving back to local students in the community, and for you, how has Students Inspiring Student Scholarship impacted you and your family? Oh, it's impacted so much. I'm the first one in my family to get to go to college, and without this scholarship, there's no way I would have been able to go. So it's a really big blessing. Yeah, that is terrific because you get this incredible experience. And what has surprised you most about life here at GCU and life as a college student? College in general is a big change, you know, going to high school, you don't think that much about it, but then it's such a different shift, especially living here on campus. You see all these people and just here, the energy, the havoc, what they have to offer, what they give, so much energy, so much positive, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, and it's amazing to see it happen, and it's a beautiful thing to witness as well. Yeah, that's all fun, everyone, and I think this is a full circle moment for you, because share with you, Brianna, your plan after graduation, what do you plan on doing? Yeah, so I'm planning to be a teacher. I'm majoring in English for secondary education, and I plan to stay in the district where I came from. So I went to Washington High School. I hope to go back, Glendale Union District, stay in Phoenix. And when you go and you are a teacher now on the other side of things, how or 
why would you encourage your students to be a part of Students Inspiring Students? Well, Students Inspiring Students was honestly just an amazing opportunity, and without it, I wouldn't be a teacher, and I want to be a teacher just to impact everybody, and everybody that I know, I, I want to make them proud. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and guys, just an absolute incredible program. If you could only imagine what it would be like for you in high school to get that impact from local college students helping you and shaping you and really letting you know that uh, a life like this here at GCU can exist for them. No doubt about it. Fantastic. Giving back to the community. Great to hear that she's going to teach in the same school district. Durham throws up the three. Oh. I was just getting ready to say that the Lopes are doing a really good job defending the three. They were one of ten coming out of that timeout, and then that big three bomb over the top of the defense. This is up the largest lead of the game. Labor. I've been on super swarm there. Frayer is going to try the three. Not going to happen. Finky's picking up the rebound. Fresh 30 into Labor. Battling Suber again. Wow, look at the sea, the swarm. Finky. Doesn't get it off. It's fouled. Hit the hand there. They just converge on the ball, don't yep. they? Good, good. And they're clear or quick. And you think you got an open man here, a double team. Look how quick that rotation comes. Runs Finky off that shot. And good thing he's got an ability at 6'10 to be able to put the ball on the floor because he's able to create an opportunity there and get the foul and go to one. They've got to be a tremendously well conditioned team because. Go at this pace. Person out. Back in. Edler Davis. 11 of 17 from the free throw line. It's just a three possession game. Man. Lopes are only down six. You got a ton of time left to go in this one. It just. Right now, they, they got to figure out something to stop this ball from getting into that painted area. Joiner to get that ball below the free throw line. That's going to be a turnover. Last center court. Joiner's holding the bridge of his nose. He must have got uh, down there and got smacked by somebody, even a little bit of paint. Contact. The yeah, official's going to check. Come out of his eyeball. In case there's any blood, he's going to have to check himself out. Yeah, no, he's got his contact. He oh, holds his contact? contact in his hand. Yeah. Oh. Hope it's not his tooth, and it is a contact. Yeah, yeah. It looks like they need to put a little saline on there and get it cleaned up, get it back in there. I think he's going to have to Take come out time. of this game. Take your time. Take yeah, He's got to get a substitute yeah. to come out of this game. They, and go back to the locker room. have to go back there. Yeah, he needs a mirror. Quick, somebody hide the saline solution. That wouldn't be fair, would it? I mean, it's terrible. No, no I shouldn't no, say yeah. that. That's awful. <laughs> but let's do it anyway. Because I think the kid's playing out of his head. mind here, playing really well. He, he, he's a stud. I mean, he's kicking go just in the sophomore season. Uh, caught the Western Athletic Conference on fire. He's averaging 19 points a game in the Western Athletic Conference. He's almost at that total right now. I believe he's still sitting on 17 that he has to have. Really respect Coach Barnes and what he's done. His head coach took Ole Miss to the Sweet 16 in 2001. Going to right the ship for Bakersfield. Wow, there. Notice Carlos Johnson ever used that long striding Euro step as much as he has tonight, but. He's found something that has really worked against his Bakersfield defense. It's, it's just that getting to the side of these defenders' bodies have been drawing that contact. Already the fifth foul on the Roadrunner, so that's something that they'll have to be concerned about. You don't want to put these low at the line too early in the second half and let them come back in this game by getting uh, trips to the free throw line. They're doing a good job. They're out working the, the lobes in the paint. Right now, 24 to 14 advantage points in the paint, but Lopes is getting that free throw line more than running. Johnson 7 of 11 from the free throw line. Runners 3 of 5 as a team. Drexel off the bench at the table.
Durham, wow, this kid is nailing the threes, and he's done so all season long. Yeah, and they bring the rain. When he when he shoots it, there's no doubt that that thing is coming straight down. It, and that's what you need. You like a high arcing shot so the ball can have a better chance to go in the bucket. This seems a little excessive, but the last couple have gone in. Bakersfield's bench outscoring the Lopes 14 to 4. Durham 58 of 192 coming in from three point land. Not afraid to throw it beyond the arc. Yeah, and Lee with a nice swat on that Carlos Johnson drive. Here's Fakey. Quick. Again, that inbound. They've got that down to perfection. And Michael Fakey looking to find that groove. Yeah, they like the BOBs. That baseline out of bounds play. Quick curl for Fakey. Man. That's his money shot along the baseline. Either that 15, 16 foot range or even extend it all the way out to the three point line with a little more time to high it. In the corner. Edler Davis moving in on Freya. Must labor with some help underneath Durham off the glass and in. Constantly attacking around that basket. Let a guy post up five feet from the bucket. Some bad things will happen to you defensively. Drexel. Step back. Short. Johnson tried to get in there. Holden on the run. Holden trying to work on Drexel. Drexel is going to be called. That was a nifty little move by the 5'10 Holden. He faked like he was going to go to his left hand to the outside of that backboard. And snapped it back to the inside. That's when Drexel got himself in some trouble. Coach Barnes got a smile on his face. He likes the way his team's playing. Well, 28 to go. Look, it was really close. Drexel, did he hit the ball? Sure looks like he got like that, that left hand on the ball. Yeah, look, he got that left paw on the ball. But once again, you're an aggressive player, making an aggressive play, you're going to get benefit of the doubt. Hold him. Largest lead of the game for Bakersfield at nine. Matt Jackson back in. To the lineup. Labor takes a seat. Drexel. Back to Finky. Down to Jackson. Waits. Oh, my. Careful. It's coming back from that back. Oh, the top. Lakes. Look at this one, one more time. And it's a nice job by Drexel. He takes two defenders with him and gets the ball back to the pick and pop guy, which is who knocked in six threes. You know the runners were watching that game film, and then he does such a nice job passing from the high post area down to the low post area. And the six assists on Tuesday to go along with those 38 points. Lee has to check out with four personal fouls. Darren Person Jr. Back in. Out on Person Jr. Lopes get a fortuitous bounce. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. Look at Marley there. Yeah, oh, where is he? Where the Detroit Tiger? Uh, yeah, he's wearing a Detroit uh, baseball cap there. And You're living in Michigan. Former Lope. Taking some spring training, seeing some of his old mates here. Battling the night, trying to get a dub. Johnson goes in! That's uh, still on the page out of Bakersfield, but getting that second chance opportunity and a hard work from Johnson, keeping that ball out on a free throw line, rewarded with a, a bucket after the inbound play. Barnes with a bit of cushion, put some reinforcements into the lineup. Boy, there's a fortuitous bounce underneath. Suber on the ground. Somebody pick it up. Put a fork in it. Jump ball. Close to a travel, but it, it belongs to the Lopes as the possession arrow. We'll regroup. 11.39 to go. The lead is six for Bakersfield. The Lopes trying to close out the home regular season slate.
with a victory to stay on pace with Utah Valley for that second spot in the whack with the Wolverines up 24-18 in their game. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. By Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is that Sanderson Ford. And by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Barry Bittell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and the king and queen have been announced. Oh, what a good picture that is. <laughs> <laughs> that looks a little like Kitty G. Odd oh, reference. You don't see it? Yeah. <laughs> Not really sure. Maybe with the hair. Yes, the hair. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Lopes, the last about minute and a half, two and a half minutes, have really picked up their tenacity. And it seemed like they're suddenly playing with more energy, getting on the offensive glass, strapping for balls defensively, diving on the floor. That's what it's going to take. Vicky, Drexel sees a little bit of gap, turns, twists, puts it in. Drexel with a big bucket there after the timeout. Uh, Drexel's got a nice little pull-up game, that mid-range game. That time, able to turn the corner, get deep into that painted area. It's trying to rally the team on the court. They're down by four. Edler Davis. Not there. Big rebound. Drexel. Cuts in again. Underneath. Foul. Oh, no foul. They're trying to say the defender was vertical. Down there with the high hands as Drexel goes in there, tries to get this body contact. Is he inside that restricted area? He certainly is. I don't understand wow. why that is not a foul. He jumped. My goodness. Greg Lee. Four personal fouls. Remains in the game. Joiner. Checks it out. All alone. And good for Edward Davis. Yeah, they lost Davis that time. He was wide open, about 10 feet of space, free to fire. That's what kind of, that one stopped. Michael Finke off the window. Yeah, nice job by Finke. They went right back inside. He would try posting up Finke, posting up Carlos Johnson. Drexel's getting inside. They were down 26 to 16 points in the paint. Coach Marley won't have none of that on his home floor telling his troops to go inside for baskets. Under 10 minutes to go, second half. Durham. Back inside, Suber. Loose ball again, Suber. Can't put it home. Finky. Up to Milstead. And they just crashed the glass. Third in the nation. Drexel, three. Good! Get that stop and get that ball down before Baker still has a chance to get their defense set. Just a little ball move around the perimeter, and this place is going nuts. Barnes calls the timeout for Bakersfield. 
Talk about Bakersfield's inability in games to finish off ball games. They've had leads at half. They've had leads in the midway through the second half, but have not been able to close the field not so many times this season. Send it over to Kay Baumler. Well, guys, you're going to be jealous. I'm with your favorite mom of the Lopes players, Paula. That is, of course, Jared Martin's mom. And also making his first appearance here at GC Arena to watch a game in person here is Jeff Beakey, father to Michael and Tim Beakey. And we know you've been busy because you're also a high school coach. Congratulations on the big win last night. Your team is heading to the sectionals back home. Yeah, but tonight, thanks. what is it like for you to take in this environment and watch your boys play? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, you know, obviously, the Havocs and just everything here at GCU. So the boys have had a great time. And uh, to have them together on the same team playing for Coach Marley has been, been a great experience. And Paul, it is so hard to say goodbye to, of course, Jared and Matt, too. But it's going to be hard to say goodbye to you. We've enjoyed our time with you over these past few years. What has the experience been like for you having Jared Martin in the Lopes Oh, no, this has been the best experience of my life and his life. We really loved coming here. I don't know what I'm going to do in December now that I don't get to come here. And the, everyone's been so welcoming. It's been like a big family. I don't know who I'm going to bring chocolates to anymore. And no, I've loved, we've loved it. <laughs> and, and Dan Marley has called Jared the heart and soul of this team. As a mom, what does that mean to you? Oh, that means so much because I see what he brings to the team, but it's nice when other people recognize it as well. Now, he loves playing for this team and for Coach Marley as well. And for you, Dad, when you see your sons go out there, I know this is a dream they had playing right. pickup in the driveway. What has it been like to see it to come to fruition? I, I, I couldn't hear you. To see your boys come back together on the same team. Yeah, it's, it's been great. And they spend a lot of time together off the court as well. But they're really close, and uh, yeah, it's a dad's dream come true. We joked, guys, that we're going to start the chance for Michael the one more year. <laughs> and as far as Paula, she did bring the chocolates, oh, but she left him in the other bag. What or is that just what I'm saying? And I have the chocolates. You will never, oh, never know. That's <laughs> we'll get to see Mr. Finky some more. As yeah. <laughs> you know, Tim's just a, a freshman, so he'll be around for many more years. Game last night, picked off Johnson's attempt to hold him back. Loose ball, Lopes ball. Turnovers nearly cost the Lopes, but they hustled back defensively and got that break stopped. That's much to the chagrin there of Coach Barnes. It has this feel that like one of those games where if the Lopes can get this lead, they may never surrender. Into Finke. Back to the bucket, working on Suber. Muscling, twisting, right hand. Good, Michael Finke! Well, Finke's coming alive in the second half. He had 27 against Eastern New Mexico in the second half, and he's starting to heat up here. 7 0 for the Lopes. Game is tied. Finke waving to the crowd. Get the energy up. Turning, Edler Davis. Back out, takes it, twists, turns, working on Drexel. Doesn't go, rebound underneath. They got Finky underneath and a battle down low, and he'll be side out of bounds. Just a third uh, team foul now on the, on the looks. He's going to make that the fourth team foul. So timeout on the uh, floor with the uh, Lopes now tied with the Roadrunners at 51 apiece. And for GCU, another senior to talk about is the one Trey Drexel. Drexel uh, certainly showing a ton of energy tonight. He is in, in a Mr. Intensity out there on the basketball floor and diving for balls, fighting on the offensive glass. Doing it all, trying to get this W of this last time tonight. He's got 10 points and 4-7 shooting and 4 rebounds. But I can't even imagine how many times they've had to mop up the floor after this guy has given up his body and gone down to the hardwood. But I love that one right there. That takes just extra energy and concentration, that spinning move. And look at this one right here. No hesitation. I tell you what, this kid has come a long way. When I first saw him in practice before the first game, where 
He wasn't quite sure. You couldn't tell if his confidence level was there, whether or not that D2 player deserved to be on the floor with these D1 players. But he certainly has shown Coach Marley in, in, in himself what a player he can be at this level. Head coach Andy Stankowitz and the GCU baseball team on the road this weekend. They take on the USC Trojans at historic Dado Field for a three-game set. The Lopes won that first game last night. 4-2, little rain prevented them from playing tonight. Behind the pitching of Cade Meckles, he's been red hot 3-0. And, oh. and the bat, of course, of Quinn Cotton. They're back at Brazel Field at GCU Ballpark, March 6th. Single game with the Wolfpack of Nevada. First pitch, 6 p.m. Gets the game on online at GCU.tv. Dave Meckles, ERA under one. Under one? Yep. Strong, that's the way I used to hit, throw it off the, off the oh, bump. Really, oh. you were under one? I was, well, I, yeah, okay, hold on. maybe oh. not under one. I mean, <laughs> it might be a little, a little bit of an exaggeration. I'll tell you what, I used to come in like a submariner. Remember the old guy, Kid to Kobe? Yeah. Kind of whip it from third base down yeah. there, and all those little right-handed batters be bailing out with my long arms. Were, were you as tall as you are now? Like Randy uh, Johnson, right? I, I was like, you know, the, the Little League version of Randy Johnson back oh, in the day. Goodness. Yeah, I was all, all legs. I had a high kick and steer the heck out of those batters. I used to throw fire. I didn't have much of a, I didn't have much motion in my pitch, but I could locate it well. Lopes shot 33.3% shooting in the opening half, 47.1% here in the second. Inbound for the runners. Looking for an open player in the corner. Durham. Not going to happen. Loose ball or Michael Finke able to grab it. Well, was the last time the Lopes had the lead in this basketball game? They got a chance on this possession to regain the lead. Got it at 51. Can they take the lead? Away from the ball. Oh, that's going to be free throws. Wrestling with Finke down low is going to send the young man to the line. Oh, Barnes can't believe it. That puts the road runners over the team on the limit. Michael Pinky and shoot the one and one. Super. Pinky at the line. Oops. Take the lead by one. 7.42 to go. run propelling them in the lead by just two don't let joiner get ahead of steam towards that basket on this possession make somebody else beat you here revving the engines joiner ooh, milstead trying to shut it down lost the ball oh, leaned in milstead's going to be called fifth foul there's no uh, doubt what they wanted to do on this possession it was just to get Joyner isolated on the top and clear everybody out of that middle area and let him operate. Well they got to call timeout. Great wow. D by the Lopes. Poor execution of their baseline out of bounds play and they have to burn a timeout in such a close game that comes back to bite you if you need a timeout late in the game and you ain't got it. Lopes 14-3 run over the last four minutes 50 seconds. You look at the scoreboard, up by eight against California Baptist, Utah Valley, and the Lopes nodded at nine and four in that second spot in the whack. California Baptist knocked off the Roadrunners. The Cardinal Center in Bakersfield. The Lopes women are in action as well. Coming up, the uh, tournament for the women start on the 13th of March. Inbound. This time it is executed. Floater. I'm not sure. I think they got a push out off yeah, on did, that drive. They? Wow. Coach Barnes absolutely can't believe it. He's got to get up and take a bit of a stroll. And that's that's going to be the fifth team foul on Lee. He's out of there. Oh, That's a big blow to this Roadrunners. Like the 
see that one one more time. I know they've been calling a little tighter here in the second half than they were in that first half. But Greg Lee, just two points. He's got a couple block shots in the game. He's been crashing on that offensive glass, keeping balls around, but alive. But not the way he wanted to finish his night with seven over seven minutes to play still in this basketball game. To the right, Vicky in the corner. Bam! B -b Bam! What a well-executed play. Oh, Michael Fiki has got it on automatic right now. And this is just a, just running Fiki off a couple baseline screens out to that three-point line. I talked about his ability to be able to shoot that baseline three. Coach Marley recognizing game, gets Fiki the ball while he's hot. <laughs> to his left. Now back out. A little tighter defense. Holden tries the three. Short. Rebound. Muscling is super. He puts it in off the window. Oh, he run about that. He just flexed on him down there. Got that ball. Got it back in before Carlos Johnson could come over and help. You can see Milstead, give the Milstead a lot of credit. He's denying Joyner the ball. They're making somebody else have to beat him down the stretch. Ten rebounds, six of them offensive. He leads in that category. Oh, Johnson in and out. Oh, delicious finger roll, wasn't able to go. And then Johnson trying to work hard for that ball again. Foul. Oh, ticky tacky, ticky tacky. Yeah, the, the referees really changed the way they called this game from first half to second half. It looked like Johnson got slapped on the arm there and no whistle, but then going after that basketball again, he slaps down and gets whistled for the call. That's the one I thought he got there, and then going for that ball. Does he slap at that ball? No, I don't even touch eh, not really. I mean, he kind of makes a move like he's going to slap at it, but not wiser of it. Official will call it, too, is behind the Roadrunners player. Hold it. Ow! Oh! Figgy got grabbed! Good by Burson Jr. Yeah, that was obvious. Wow. I mean, at the free throw line like that, it, wow. it was like he put some kind of body straps on Finky and pulled him backwards like he had a harness on him. And that was the easiest call officials made all, all night long. It's just two arms around Finky's waist and pulls him back as he goes for the ball. Four, Finky yeah. just knocked down two free throws. That's one of the last guys you want to put on the on the free throw line. He's He's got it going right now. He hit three throws, mid-range jump shots. Three pointers and now another trip to the free throw line. Watch out. Watch out. Statement here with Matt Jackson getting extended minutes. Ollie Labor on the bench. Labor's been on that pine for a while. We haven't seen Oscar Ferrer in a while. Yeah. Hey, Drexel's playing hard. He's, uh, as you said, Finky is playing hard. Carlos Johnson's been out there. He's giving it his all. Well, Joyner's got it. Oh, oh. Got to get out and meet that guy. Yeah, he not known for a three-point shot, but sometimes when he, the guy hadn't touched it for a while, and then he gets it, he's like, I'll take any shot. Best shot I get, I'm going to take, take a look at it. And he's so clutch, he knocked it down. Long three, Michael Finky! 21 points, 10 rebounds, coming off a 38-point performance, Michael Finke. Yeah, I think he's going to earn some uh, whack player of the week honors if the Lopes can get this oh, victory. Oh! Matt Jackson. Offensive foul, Matt Jackson, the senior, in his final home game, has stepped up big time. Now, this is a nice job coming off the ball there. Oh, excuse me, on the ball, Matt Jackson. You slide this feet. That's good. And look at Finky. <laughs> Shot that one from downtown. Knocked it in. 
talked about a couple free throws right before the half, about two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Think he hadn't done a thing, nothing. And uh, got a chance to go to free throw line, and it made all the difference in the world in his game here in the second half. Finky again, why not? Bam! Hallelujah! They called an offensive foul. I what? don't understand why they're wiping out the basket. Called an offensive foul on Matt Ooh. Jackson. Whistle number five, Matt Jackson for an offensive foul. Coach Marley, he can't believe it. He PO'd. Let's see what Jackson does. Does he move that right shoulder just a little bit on that screen? Officials have painted themselves in the corner with some of these tight balls. Oh, wait, he fanned it and didn't even hit the guy. Rebound underneath. Welch possession. Oh, these replays are brutal to watch because there's no contact whatsoever. They're great. Don't get me wrong. Drexel. Knocked out by Holden. Drexel's got to do a better job holding on that rock. I think he had great position down on that low block. And Nice size advantage. The guy's got it going right now. Left shoulder turn, right hand hook. That's two points he's let off the line. Vicky. No step. Back to Michael. Playing him a lot tighter now. Durham on him. Ooh, got a hand on that. Reach her. They can't stop Vicky. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he, he might have the number 23. Shorts on underneath his jersey there. He's got like Michael Jordan that scoring ability right now. It doesn't matter if he's out of that three-point line or running the fake dribble handoff and taking it down the block and trying to post up. And you can see Bakersfield saying anything to try to stop him. They're sending different players at him, putting different guys on him. Doesn't matter. Autopilot. Yeah. Great to see Michael Finke. It's the final regular season game at home. Two more on the road and then tournament time. You hope that he continues this hot streak, this torrid streak into the tournament. Oh, he's quiet. That was the golf there. Coach Dad right there. 21 points this half for Michael Finke. 440 to go on the clock. Durham. Johnson got a hand on it, knocked it out. The runner's ball in front of their bench. You gotta have those deflections defensively. You gotta have those plays that disrupt the other team's offense. Nice job by Carlos Johnson being active. Heather Davis waiting the ball. Apparently a conversation with the official and someone on the bench. See Brent Rapp over there, the former Roadrunner player, part of the staff, as a graduate assistant coach. Stopping, popping off the mark, Suber with the rebound. <laughs> I, it, it's impressive because yeah. it doesn't look like he's got the best of position, yet somehow finds a way to contort his body and snatch that ball and then back up so fast with it. 63 58 4 13 on the clock the Lopes trying to finish strong here on their home court win their 10th conference game stay on pace for that second spot in the Western Athletic Conference will return in just a moment Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service.
Feel the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. Welcome back inside GCU Arena on this homecoming night and senior night. And right now, the Lopes with the 63-58 lead over Bakersfield. As uh, time winds down, we'll see how this one plays out. But first, before the game, it's a very special night for some former stars in the Lopes uniforms. It was uh, G as GCU inducted several members into the Hall of Fame, making the class of the year George Holmes his Bachelor of Science in Business Administrative. He graduated from Erie Canyon University in 1977. Hey girl, she just graduated in 2012. Randy John Riggs graduated uh, as an athletic inductee in Bachelor of Science in Psychology as well. Reginald Freeman and Sharky Baker, who we had the pleasure of talking to earlier, who was on the very first GCU baseball team, also teamed up for the basketball team met his wife here on campus and i loved his uh, candid comments guys about what there's sharky right there to the left of your screen what changed since he uh attended here and he said it used to be just a few buildings and now look at it and i can't even imagine what it looks like from 1956 because i'm amazed every week when we drive up here i know <laughs> sharky said it was just a couple gray buildings and a coke machine <laughs> milstead johnson All for the charge. I like the aggressive play by Johnson. <laughs> he has been putting his head down and taking it to the hole, but that time the defender was uh, had seen that play too many times and was waiting for it. Yeah, the man uh, with the uh, towel has been busy. <laughs> yes, indeed. More so than any game I could ever remember here at GCU Arena. A lot of bodies going to the floor. Edler Davis taking one for his team. Dreyer stops. Oh, looky, looky. Mm -hmm. Three pointer, now a mid range shot. Now all of a sudden, one possession game. And they've let the guy that has been so hot all night long burn him twice now. Milstead at Jackson. Jackson for Drexel. Drexel up top. Into Carlos Johnson. Moves right. Goes up high. Is fouled. Suber. And Carlos Johnson says, I don't care if you took one charge. I'm going right back in there again for some success. Good job going in there, Carlos Johnson. Should keep driving. There's three road runners on the court now with three personal fouls. Holden, Suber, Edward Davis. Critical at the line. 7 of 12 for the, for the free throw line is Johnson. He's not the greatest free throw shooter. He can get real hot sometimes on streaky, but he's got to find a way to figure out how to make these down the stretch. They're going to keep fouling. He keeps taking it in there. Yeah. Close in on three minutes to play. We've got a four point game. Joiner. Don't give him too much space. Now nah, take away a strong right hand, force him to his left. Waiting that they're taking so much time off the clock. Now he moves. Looks for three. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. You, you, you did what you wanted to do. You, you took away the right hand and you stepped behind the arc and buried a second three of the half. He's got 26 points. Jackson. Good! Back Jackson with a big bucket. Yeah, long two-pointer. Jackson answers at the other end. His seniors, Jackson and Finky, are not trying to go out of here with an L. They want that W tonight. Milstead's got to step it up defensively against Joyner. Edler Davis drives. Finky on him. Finky's going to be called. Yeah, you know, generally players are right handed, so if you get up on that right shoulder and force them to the left, they generally can't get all the way to the hole. Look at that one again by Matty Jackson out of the corner. That's where Finky likes to shoot it from. 
that long corner three. And Jackson says, I can bury the long corner three too, but unfortunately had a toe on the line. Johnson and Finky each have three personal fouls. Edler Davis. Too strong on that first attempt. Coach Marley's going to dial up here. So many places he can go. Fingy's been the hot guy. Carlos Johnson driving the ball. Matt Jackson with a pick and a pop. Uh oh, big miss there for GCU. It really is. And that's a chance to extend it to a two possession game. Well, Marley's going to draw this one up, knowing how important time and score is here. A three point lead, 2.11 to go. So wants to make sure everyone's on the same page. Michael Finky. Hardly heard from in the opening half, but he has lit it up in the second. Well, he did the same thing the other night. He got a decent start. He had 11 points in the first half, but then exploded in the second half with 27 points. And many of them came the same way as what he's doing now, mixing it in the inside game and the three-point shot. Of course, he buried six three-pointers uh, against Eastern New Mexico. He's got a couple here in the second half tonight, and Coach Marlin loves it. Two points, three rebounds, 21 points, seven rebounds. Michael Finke in the second. With his father, Finke checking his son out. He's got to get back, man. They are, they're heading to the sectional. They're having a good luck charm. Yeah. Tim Finke. Played, played very poised as a freshman. I'd agree with that. Some real good minutes. Look at look. Baker still comes out here in a little zone defense. Back to Finky inside. Jackson quickly. Drexel puts it on the floor. Back out. Jackson. Seven on the shot clock. Milstead for three. That's going to be short. Kick back out. Loose ball. Roderick is on the floor. Oh no! Not a foul. We got Jackson with a foul, reaching around a defender, trying an offensive player, trying to get that ball back, and that's going to send him to the line. Wow. Tough break right there. Jackson sees it, the ball's on the ground, and he just kind of dives and reaches around, and yeah, that's a foul. Yeah, that's a foul. Unfortunately, I, I understand that the ball's there, I can see it, I want to get it, and got to go through the code runner's player to try to get that ball back. Rajay Moore at the line. 62% free throw shooter, 18 of 29. Oh, Roadrunners shooting themselves in the foot here at the line. Patrick 0 for 3. Look at the tie game if they could have made those. The Barnes can't believe it. It's the second. Two point game, 149 to go. Buckle up, Lopes fans. Be a wild ride down the, to the finish. Drexel had any problem there, swarming. No step. Over to Carlos Johnson. He slices in. Up high. And good. Oh, he flopped underneath on Johnson, trying to take that charge, allowed Johnson to be able to get that bucket. Finish in a foul. Super. He comes in here, he tries to take this charge. He just flops. No contact whatsoever. My goodness. Basketball player or soccer player? at the line and they're frequently tonight short both teams leaving opportunities at the charity strike under 90 seconds to go all right four point gcu lead crowd on their feet joiner look out Edler Davis, not there. Oh, how did that go in? Oh, wow, what a lean in there. Body going towards the basket, leans in and gets the bucket. Two point game, 105. Coach Barley wants to talk about it. Two point lead for GCU. Marley calls timeout. 
Utah Valley score down at the bottom of your screen, 43-36 over California Baptist. Last time we had the same sort of scenario, Bakersfield came out with his own defense. Coach Barley had his play drawn up to go against the man-to-man -man defense, and Coach Barnes smart enough to mix it up on them. They, got a, they were lucky they got a bucket, but you have to be prepared to be able to have a, two calls here. One against the man-to-man, -man, and then one against the zone. So coming into tonight's action, New Mexico State has won over Chicago State. They're 14 and one in the conference. They've already secured that top spot. Nine and four for GCU and Utah Valley, as I just mentioned, they're on top of California Baptist. UT Rio Grande Valley has also won tonight. They're now nine and six. You see Bakersfield seven and six. And just paint the picture for what the Lopes need to do here. No doubt. They gotta just keep pace and get this done some way, somehow. Big possession here. Bakersfield will be traveling on the road as well as the Lopes and the same opponents. They'll be traveling first to Seattle and then to Orem to take on Utah Valley while the Lopes will travel to Utah Valley first and then to Seattle to close it out. One minute left to go in the game. Two point Lopes lead. Milstead moves left, cuts in, stops, pops, doesn't go. Joiner, lethal. Yeah, don't give Joiner a don't clean look for the three and don't let him go to his right. Get up on that right hand, take away the three, and make him have to drive that ball left. Long three, Joyner, good. Jarkel Joyner has put on a show. One point Roadrunners lead with 26 seconds remaining. Milstead drive, off of the foot. Jackson picks it up, back to Johnson. He slices in underneath. Michael Finke! In the foul, Michael Finke with a strong finish. Nice oh, he... pass by Carlos Johnson. Man, that bailed out to Mari Milstead. With a Aaron pass at the feet of Jackson, who was able to peel it off of the floor. He went down there and fought for that ball with everything he had to get it back to Carlos Johnson. And that's the way you finish yeah, a playoff right. on senior night. Leave no doubt. Take a deep breath. Pinky's gonna check out, Freyer's gonna check back in. Oh, so important stop here. Who is gonna check Joyner? Somebody. I don't know if Milstead's up for the challenge. They'll run two players at this guy. Make somebody else beat you. Definitely needs to step up with 17.6 seconds remaining. Milstead needs to step it up. Joyner, little tighter on him now. Timeout, Barnes, and Bakersfield. I love this game. I tell you what, these seniors are battling out here for everything they got. Bakersfield now really came to play in this one. They, you thought the Lopes were going to pull away. They had a Seven-point lead. Looked like they were going to put it in cruise control for the remainder of the game. Bakersfield comes roaring back on some big buckets by Joyner. A couple threes, some mid-range game. Right here in a two-possession game with 11 points to play. Coach Marley obviously telling his guys, don't want to foul. And we got a box out on the boards. Generally, in a situation like this, it's not the shot that beats you, but the offensive rebound that can kill you. Suber has been all over the glass. And one more time here, Carlos Johnson over to Finky. He just says, get out of my way. And he loves it. Rallying, vocal, Finky. Yeah, I'm surprised Finky's not coming back in this game. I would have liked to see him on that glass. You know, Laver's not in there, Finky's not in there. He got with a smaller line of Matt Jackson, the biggest guy on the floor. You want to be able to scramble. You want to be able to switch out on that perimeter. You want to be able to run somebody else 
at Joyner if he gets beat by, uh, gets around Milstead. He'll probably switch everything on the perimeter, one through four. They cannot allow a three. The lead is two. Lakers field, the possession arrow in their favor. No fouls to give. In to Joyner. 10 on the shot clock. Milstead on him. Joyner. Looking to move. Here comes Joyner for two. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Lopes win. I, I'm not so sure wait. they did call a foul wait. there. Wait, wait, there wait. could be six tenths left in this game. Are they sending the runners to the line? I think they're going to snow. They're sending the Lopes to the line. And I want to say Trey Drexel is going to go to the free throw line. As he got that board, they fouled him. And they're going to put in somewhere between five tenths to seven tenths of seconds left to go on that clock. They're checking it out to see how much time's left here. And nice job by Damari making him go left. Drexel gets his ball right here, and that's the foul. Oh, yeah. How much time is on the clock when Drexel gets fouled right there? Here it is. 2.4, 2, 3, five, picks five, it up. Right here. Right there. Point somewhere seven. about five, five or six yeah. on that clock. Yeah, between five and seven, Barry. You've got it, you got it absolutely right. So Trey Drexel. <laughs> New Mexico State ring a bell, up two at the line, oh, shooting man. the free throws. Oh, of course, he's shooting two free throws rather than the one and one that he had in that situation. There's a little bit more time. At gotta Las make Cruces. them both. Got, yeah, gotta make them both because if you don't, Hail Mary beats you at the buzzer. Or ties you if you don't. If Lightning. you only make one. Lightning can't strike twice. No you way. hope not. You hope not. Stranger things have happened in this game. I, seven tenths of a second, hard to do anything with it. See, this is the problem. Barnes has got no more timeouts. Remember, he had to burn a timeout. That's true. Uh, and so he can't, he can't throw the ball the length of the court and try to get a quick timeout. Though I don't know if he really could with seven tenths of a second left anyway. Hey, if you don't have your WAC tournament tickets, I don't know what you're waiting for. This conference, any night, anything can happen. Most fans need the support. But still, uh, haven't put whatever time remaining on the clock. They're still trying to figure that out? Well, come on, officials. Don't ruin a great game here with too long at that scorer's table. Let's get them out there on the floor. Let's play some ball. Finish this thing off. On that last, Bakersfield foul. Trey Drexel to shoot two. That's the shoot, too. Now, obviously, you know the story here. You make the first one, make the second one. I think if you miss the first one, you might want to miss the second one with just five tenths of a second on. What are we doing with the clock? Clock. <laughs> Everybody's Put nervous. 50 up there made me extremely <laughs> nervous. Everybody's nervous. The clock operator's nervous in this one. Can they put .7 on them? Point five I, think they're trying to, yeah, I think they're trying to put point five and they actually put 50.0. No, my heart skipped a beat there. I want some clock issues here. The freezing trade Drexel out. Come on, operators, let's get it going here. Point five. On the clock. Well, fifth year senior. Here's your time to shine. Knock them both down. Be a hero. over with this bucket. It's over. Ball game. Ball game. Nobody moves. Joiner from half court. Doesn't matter. Lopes win. The Lopes close it out on their home court with a 73-69 victory. Real happy for these seniors. They all battle extremely hard after a slow first half. Came back and finished the deal. No better feeling in the world than winning your final home game in your college career. Marley with some comments with Joyner, Lewis Wilson as well. As that roadrunner had a phenomenal game. 29 points. Look out for Jarkel Joyner, the sophomore from Bakersfield. Lopes win their 10th conference game, their 18th overall. 
finish 12 and 2 here on their home court. Yeah, most importantly, stay pace with Utah Valley for that number two seed in the Western Athletic Conference. Down to Kay Longworth. Well, guys, it only seems fitting that I would be joined by the heart and soul of this GC Love team. Karen, I know this isn't how you envision senior night with me, but taking it all in and your great career here in a Love Street Award, what's tonight mean to you? Uh, it means, means a ton. Uh, these guys played the great game. It was super fun to watch. Matty J with some charges for me. Trey Jackson with a great rebound. Mike Finky with a big dunk. All the seniors played well, so I'm super happy. In fact, I know you hope it's just the beginning of what's still to come for the Globes. But when you look back on your career, what stands out to you here at GCU? This, the atmosphere, the games, everything about it, the people here, it's amazing. Uh, all my teammates, uh, it's been amazing. And uh, today, your family, friends in town, everyone taking in the experience. What has it meant for you to come across the seas to be here? You have Matt Jackson here, you guys have worked a friendship. But how has the whole experience impact in your life? Uh, it's, I can't really explain it. It's just been amazing. Uh, all the people that have come and then how they've welcomed my mom here with the, all the, the commentators and you guys. Uh, it's just been amazing. I can't, I can't ask for a better four years. Well, we want to thank you for everything you've thank done you. here. Best of Appreciate luck. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, Jared Martin, the heart and soul of this team, guys. We're going to try to continue talking to some of the seniors as the night goes on, and uh, we will go in and hear what Dan Marley has to say about this special night as well. No doubt about it. Emotional night. They close it out with a victory on senior night, on homecoming night. Another sold-out standing room only crowd at GCU Arena. The post-game press conference with head coach Dan Marley. Our final stats and much more as we close out the home schedule for GCU men's basketball with a big 73-69 win over Bakersfield. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GCU Arena where the Lopes are victorious 73-69 over Bakersfield. Murray Buchel, Scott Williams back here. We are awaiting the post-game press conference from head coach Dan Marley. Whew. How about Mike? <laughs> you, Mike? Is that a big exhale there? Ooh, that, that, was, that was a little too close, wasn't it? It was fun. Yeah, I tell you what, I love the way this team showed some grit and some moxie and came back. They picked up their energy in the second half. You could see it, almost feel it, uh, the way they started scrapping for balls on both ends of the floor. Time now for a Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. Yeah, who else? Michael Finke. He was absolutely fantastic. Just two points in the first half and then just explodes in the second half. The road runners could do nothing with him inside. Uh, he really used his height and his length advantage in his, his smartness around the bucket. And then he got hot behind that arc, started knocking him in from all over the place. And, yeah, I love the I love the final play. I hope we have that one in the highlight package. We took it hard to the rack and finished with the and one 
right over the top of the defense. That was the big bucket to put him up. 24 points in the second half. Finishes 26, 10 rebounds. First 10 rebound game. Double double for the player of the game, Michael Finke. Let's send it downstairs to Kate Longworth and Lopes Insider Paul Coro. Well, thank you guys, and we're just going to introduce the man of the hour, welcoming in Dan Marley here with the big victory. We got you a podium for the final regular season game here. Congratulations! Holy cow! Well, uh, proud of our guys, man. Those are those are tough games. Bakersfield, we knew they'd be. Uh, a hard out. Uh, they play really hard. Coach Barnes does a great job, and Joiner is a, uh, you know, one of the top players in this league. And he had it going tonight. We couldn't find a way to stop him, but our guys stuck with it. And uh, I thought our seniors were were unbelievable, really, really good. Uh, Matt stepped in and, and played great. Uh, Trey, and then, uh, you know, Michael was all right. But uh, very proud of our guys. Made some big plays down the stretch. Um, very composed. Um, happy for them. They deserved that win. They played really hard and played well second halves that Michael's had the, these last two games, what seems to build through a game for him? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I, I went to halftime. I just said, listen, uh, you, you can't stop shooting. I said, you're a good player. Just keep shooting. Um, if it's your shot, take it. You know, you got to go down swinging. Um, and he stepped up. And so he just feels really confident right now. He's uh, doing a great job of the inside game, outside. Uh, guys are finding him in, in different sets. And as I said, confidence is a great thing. And Right now, that basket looks big to him, so it's uh, it's it's the perfect time. Yeah, how key is that timing, and what can he do for this team down the stretch? Right well, now? I mean, he's he's big because he's been uh, at a, a you know Power Five conference. He's been in big games, so uh, we need a guy who can score like that. Um, and that's the guy we can go to. You know, last year we were going to Ollie a lot in those situations, and Ollie's just struggling a little bit right now. So it's good to have a a fifth year guy who uh, has a lot of poise and, and can score in different ways. To yeah, this is going to come down to rebounding. I didn't think we did a great job rebounding. They're, one of the, they're the third offensive rebounding team in the nation, so I knew it was going to be tough. So uh, Trey's uh, been really good all year being a, a tough physical guard and getting there and getting defensive rebounds, so that was a big one. Um, and it's tough. You know, our, guard, our, our bigs are battling in there, but they, they do a good job of uh, relentless uh, uh, going after the ball. So uh, we came away with the one that we needed. Tough time scoring. It seemed like they got more determined. You know, Carlos, the way he drives and draws fouls, and Trey did some things in the lane, and Michael down low. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just stuck with it. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough game. They do a lot of hard pressure. Uh, they take you out of the game. They play physical. They foul a lot. Um, we understand that, so you got to be tough with it. And uh, uh, Carlos has, has been playing well all year long. Uh, if he would have made his three throws, he would have had a really good game. Um, but he just continues to get the line, so that's great. But as I said, I think the poise of our guys was really good, especially down the stretch. Seniors down the stretch too, you know, with Matt. And well, Ollie was struggling, and Matt, uh, you know, he's been in, in some games and he can really defend. Uh, and something about seniors, man, he knows it's his last go around, so uh, just gonna let it all hang loose. And then uh, Trey was good in there too with his defense and the way he rebounds. So uh, yeah, it's just they deserve to play tonight, and they did a great job. What can you, or how do you put into words just what it means as a player? If you think back on your days, a night like tonight, the crowd obviously, but then a senior and some of your seniors just have given so much to this program. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, with Michael and Trey, it's hard because uh, you only have them for a year, but you appreciate everything they've done for you in a short time. And we got a long way to go with those two. Uh, but with Matt and, and Jared, I, I, I was tearing up with those guys because it was five years of, you know, seeing them when they were young and, knowing what they've gone through and all the fight, and then Jared just not being a part of it tonight as far as playing. He's a huge part of what we're doing still, but those two guys mean the world to me in our program and this campus because, you know, when they got here, there was, what, 5,000 students on campus. Now there's 21, 22,000 and all the changes, and they've seen it all, and uh, they've helped grow it. So that's, you know, that's very emotional for me because those guys, uh, you know, gave it all. In the timeout huddles, Jared's like over your shoulder, closer than any coach. It seems like. Yeah, Jared's a smart guy. You know, he's he's. You know, that's what we miss most about him is he's another coach on the floor, uh, talking defensively, uh, getting guys in the right position. So, he's got a great mind for basketball. So if he ever wants to go crazy, he can get into coaching. <laughs> when Michael went on that run, you that last. What'd you think of that last three he took? Uh... I'm glad he shot it. It was deep. He's got that range. I see him shooting in practice. I was glad, man. Like I said, go down swinging. Go down with your best pitch. I, I never ever fault guys for being aggressive and having confidence in themselves. And if you're a shooter, you got to have confidence. So I was glad he took it. That was 
that was awesome. I was happy. I was smiling, and it was great. I felt great for him. I felt great for us, obviously. But you always got to go down with your best pitch, and the way he's uh, shooting it right now, just let it go, man. Let it go. On that last play, when you had to come out down without a timeout, that ball movement was kind of indicative of what you guys have done lately. Yeah, we just ran flat, which just kind of spread the floor, and we did a good job of uh, you know coming off, finding some guys, and then. Uh, Carlos with a, you know penetrating and did a really good job of finding Michael and Michael scored it. So, uh, yeah, some of the, sometimes that's our best offense. What do you want to see from the team this final week, regular season play, and propelling you into? Uh, we're going to have two tough road games in, in Seattle and, and Utah Valley. Uh, Utah Valley, you know, we're tied for them. Uh, Seattle's uh, got all their guys back. They always want to beat us. So just keep the momentum going. Um, we're disappointed in those three straight losses that we had earlier, but. Uh, the best thing is to have momentum going into the tournament and playing well. So this is going to be a good test for us on the road. But for us, it's just uh, to keep getting better every day and, and try to get some wins. All right, thanks, guys. Congratulations. Take a look at our final stats with GCU Victoria 73-69. The uh, field goal percentage in favor of the runners. Three-point shooting, very close. Free throws, lots of trips for the Lopes. Rebounding margin. 37-33, a victory for the Lopes, and they are out-rebounded. The assist margin in favor of GCU. Well, you got to be happy here on senior night. Some of the uh, numbers definitely weren't in the favor of the Lopes when you looked at the uh, stat sheet, but uh, all that matters is the final score. Yeah, 6 of 20 from 3. They were really cold behind the arc. They made some key ones down the stretch when they absolutely had to have them. I'm really happy for these seniors. Jared Martin, Matt Jackson, Michael Finke, and Trey Drexel. I mean, what a feeling. It's obviously great to get the win, but the way they did it, I mean, they all scrapped yeah. hard for it. So very happy for those cats. You could tell they wanted it very badly. Let's revisit your three keys brought to you by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Well, we talked about it. You know, mom and pop always make those sacrifices. Yep. I think that's what those players did tonight. Everybody got on the floor. They literally were on the floor. I mean, a lot of towels uh, getting mopping up the action out there. Uh, I think that the Havoc appreciation was a good one tonight. 11 turnovers on both sides. Guys really did talk and communicate. Got loud on defense, especially down the stretch there to get some stops, claw back into this thing. And then the senior moment, one that they will all cherish the most out of their career. All the victories on the road, nothing. Uh, victories at home, nothing means more to those seniors that just left the floor with the final win in their home career. Well, the Western Athletic Conference basketball tournament tickets are on sale now. Come support both the men's and women's teams as they try for their first NCAA tournament bids. The tournament set for March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Get your tickets right now, Lopes fans. The uh, Lopes need your support. In Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena, the women start on the 13th, the men on the 14th. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes are victorious, 73-69. This is perhaps our last TV broadcast, so we want to thank all of the men and women who work with us consistently to provide the best quality productions in the business. So many names to mention. We want to thank from GCU, Helen Bleach, Tim Barron, Paul Denuser, Taylor Griffin, so many people here at GCU side to uh, producer Rich Reed, unbelievable job, director Pete Gordon, also stage manager Beth Bachman, Marcy Tosti, the stat man extraordinaire, Jared Donnins, Garrett, so many other names, and I apologize for not having the time to run them down, but you know who you are, and you are extremely valuable, and you are extremely professional. These are state-of-the-art broadcasts. So until next time, everyone, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel, hoping to see you at the upcoming WAC tournament in Las Vegas. Have a wonderful evening.